pick up another recording, and we're going to switch over to Mardu, which we're supposed to be on. <laughs> yeah, Lucid, I don't know what you're expecting. Like, Phoenix is in. They never fizzle. There's just right. too much random garbage in there that'll kill you. All right, so uh, just to everybody's on the same page with this, uh, we are playing a Mardu of... Uh, Mardu Shadowless. Uh, we've got a variety of fetches and shocks and basics. Um, we've got four baubles, three paths, four shadows, two pushes, two inquisitions, four thought seizes, two unearths, two lootings, a hex parasite, a spell bomb, three, uh, two dreadhorde, one tamir, three skullers, four rangers, a dismember, four street rates, and a gormog. Over in the side, we've got two purges, Gideon, two engineers, a Liliana, four ley lines, shenanigans, two fulminators, culligans, and a wear and tear. We'll make sure I queue up with the right deck. Submit. <laughs> All right, and I'll make that the live deck, and then we'll go back to the rant. Oh, I mean, like, the rant was pretty much yeah. done. It's just, like, you can't 100% trust the judge community. I mean, like, there have been so many things where, like, like I'm, I remember playing in stuff where there's been, like, just shady things with, like, judges running, you know, being TOs and running tournaments in, like, very awkward ways and other things like that. And, I, you know, like, um, one of the biggest leaks uh, for Magic that is kind of the reason that Wizards is so, like, tight about that uh, leaks and things like mm -hmm. that, um, or at least tries to be, uh, one of the biggest ones came from a community of judges here on the East Coast. Like, it was, a, like, uh, it was, I think it was that when they uh, spoiled the New Phyrexia God book. It was uh, yes. that judge community that did it. And, like, there's a lot of these things where it's, like, really just kind of awkward to shady to, like, full-blown just stupid. Yeah. And, the, and, like, it, it, I don't know, a lot of people have, like, a lot of implicit trust in them and well you're supposed to right like that's the idea yeah. they, they uh, you're, they're, you're putting them in a position where you're sp i just can't get lands um you're supposed to be putting them Can in a position in i have lands okay. i swear any red sources <laughs> what is it? Uh, I was I was watching before I uh, dropped my kiddo off or left to drop my kiddo off i was watching the two man cues you were doing with this deck and this this hex parasite is wild. It's so good. Like who? I who love submitted it. this list. This is from Ryan, Ryan Jansen. Man, I love it. I love it. I was like, oh, I understand now. It's it's Phyrexia and X mana, not um, X mana Phyrexia or whatever. Mm -hmm. Reverse, and I was like, oh, this is so much better. I can just keep clicking and paying life. Yep. yep. <laughs> the, the, I have listen. That was a real interaction and standard with that card. Um, I played it as a one of in pod. Mm -hmm. uh, I forget how I was able to tutor it up, but like, there would be games where people, like, a lot of people were playing Phantasmal Image at the time, and being able to just pay two life and gun down a Phantasmal Image was like really good. <laughs> yeah, they'd like copy a time and you're like kill it, and they're like it doesn't have counters. I'm like, you know, judge have them explain it because hey. Weird. You can still target it, even though it doesn't have counters. You're just removing no counters, and it's such a weird card, Hex Parasite. Should I just remember this Swift Sphere? It's like the worst value, right? I think if we don't, we're taking more than four damage from it. Oh wait, cancel. I can. Uh... Oh, we can. We can fetch up a swamp. Yeah, I don't think it matters that we don't have red, so I think that's fine. Yeah, and then we'll reduce the life even more. Don't need red mana against uh, burn. It's bad. Okay, we'll do that again. Yeah, I, I am very excited for this program, and I'm looking more of the upside of it than the downside of it, because I know some people were screaming that the sky is falling and all that. Um, but I think that what they are hopefully doing is similar to what other organizations has done, which is creating a um, creating a system that 
you you know it's like my, I have a real estate license mm -hmm. and my real estate license allows for me to uh, I have to go make sure I have necessary training every year yep. I have to make sure that I'm held to a, a certain standard um, that everybody I can be reviewed on anybody can report me and then I'm gonna be you know looked at for that it's the same thing with my certified apartment manager certified apartment portfolio supervisor any of my certifications there is a board that reviews what is occurring and what's going on and going, hey, you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing. Yep. And I think that will alleviate a lot of my um, qualms with the, like, the judge program as it is currently because, like, it will, I don't know, like, there, it, it will help alleviate some of the uh, mistrust I have as someone who, like, understands the rules and has had as I've said before, weird run-ins with mm -hmm. uh, judges before. And um, it, it gives that sort of sense of trustability and a little bit of the, like, kind of authority because, like, yes, they, they, they actually have had to go through actual training. Right. Whereas before, like, becoming an L1 wasn't... I mean, I don't know how it is now, but before, like, it was actually kind of easy to get as to, I mean, I, as get, an L1. I, I became an L1 and... I'm going to sack in response to the Rift Bolt to prevent the three damage, for sure. Nice. Um, yeah, it's... Oh, they're just bolting it. That's rude. Yeah, that is rude. Sack in response. <laughs> Your bolt fizzles. Yeah, and I, I've had bad judge callings myself that have cost me matches and top eights and stuff like that, because I think we've all eventually got to that point where we're like, wow, that, that really sucks if this mm -hmm. happened. Yeah, I can remember one judge call where, the, like, the judge's hands were a little, literally tied about this, but was, uh, I used to actually play with dice at competitive events, mm -hmm. you know, keep track of life totals, and there's a life total discrepancy that my opponent brought up after I had swung my entire team. He's like, no, I go to one. I was just like, excuse me? <laughs> right. Uh, and, you know, he hadn't corrected me on this uh, the whole time, and I was just like, and I, you know, we called the judges over, and they're like, well, he's using... A life bag. Yeah, he's using pen and paper, and we're using dice, so unfortunately, we, the only thing that we can trust is his. And, like, most of, like, yeah, it was just super awkward. <laughs> and, I, you know, clear, I lost the game, lost the match, but I was just like, never using dice at Comp Ariel again. <laughs> right. You know, like, it, yeah, God. It only takes one of those experiences to, like, just give you, to traumatize you, and you're just like, yeah, never, ever again. Mm -hmm. Um, Cyborg thoughts here. Uh, I don't want to, I want to take out the Street Wraiths and this Dismember here. Uh, Gideon seems fine, Purge seems fine, Lily and Coligan seem reasonable. I don't know if I want to bring in Fulminators. Doesn't seem um, like it's good enough, but they usually are also kind of, like, tight on mana. But I don't think that's worth it. Hundred percent forgot what your opponent was playing. It's a Boros burn. Oh, okay. Um. So I don't. Fulminator is like kind of awkward. Like Blood Moon actually is kind of better than Fulminator because it shuts off all of their white mana permanently. They don't have a good way of dealing with it. Okay. Um. Yeah, Thoughtseize is for sure coming up. But uh, well, like, if, well, if we have Thoughtseize is coming out, what are we doing? Plague Engineers and Fulminators because there's nothing really else to bring in. I mean, that might just be it. Like, wear tear might be something because you can disenchant a Eidolon. I'd almost rather just have the Fulminator or the Plague Engineer at that point. Yeah, you're probably right. Because at least it's a blocker. Mm -hmm. um, or they have to send damage to it. Where the wear and tear hits just one thing where this can just always be cast. Yeah. Yeah, I think I, I, I like that. Now, we do have to remember, it's going to be real hard getting to the Shadows life total, because we boarded out eight, or uh, a bunch of them. <laughs> the, the upside a bunch is, of life loss spells are now gone. Yeah, the upside is that one or two shocks should really do it for us. Yeah. And I guess, yeah, I guess I didn't count in the Silent Clearings pinging you mm -hmm. as well. Silent Clearing is doing a lot of work for these Shadow decks. Silent Clearing... Fiery Islet. Maybe that's why Fiery Islet is one of the more expensive ones, because Grixis Shadow would want it. It's the only one that they can put in that deck. Yeah. Grixis Shadow's not going to play too much, though. 
I mean, neither is Mardu Shadow. Esper Shadow is, though. Is it? Yeah, Esper Shadow's. Uh, well, it's Esper and Mardu. Both get a little bit of play here and there. I think I see it more on MTGO than I do in paper. Honestly, I think it's more just for the fact that, like, it's not so much that Shadow's good, it's just that Knight, or the Ranger Captain of Eos can get you a free 6-6 six, six sometimes, so just jamming a Shadow deck is good. Triple creatures? Yikes. He doesn't oh, have any spells, so I Zero just... spells, and he's on a mold of five. I kind of want to just take a Goblin Guide. You take the guide, they play either of them, we use the sculler to take the other one. Yeah. And they've got a Eidolon on top. Alright. Do we want to take that one? Because that one seems like it's way more dangerous. We're going to take that one. We're going to take that one. We must get a shadow. Oh boy. It's all coming up us. Yeah, I'm, I'm hoping for an improvement with that, and I think it has high potential to do that. Yep. I know a lot of the judges that I respect that have read it, they are on board, so I think that's like a, a good, really good thing. Sign. Yeah, it's a good sign for the program. Taking so much damage. I'm not used to this. Yeah, it's weird, right? Your mana base just doesn't tap for seven on turn three. Mm -hmm. so what is going on? Like this isn't I'm, modern. I'm not ramping into something. I'm not. I'm not uh, generating insane mana, or I'm not comboing. Yeah, that's the other thing I do. I combo with creatures. Wow, you just scooped. Just conceded. Conceded. Yeah, like it seems like such a weird way to build it. Like I don't know. I almost kind of wish that, like, honestly, every time I see these, like, red-black decks with Unearth and, um... Mmm, this, this hand's not good enough. No, this hand's awful. This hand's fine. It is fine. Pitch, uh, looting. <sighs> Modern legal brainstorm. I don't even remember what point I was on beforehand. Hmm? Man, we're not going to do good in this league if I'm not... Uh, my, my brain is just, like, missing everything. <laughs> like, I can't even remember the point that I was on before we were talking about that mulligan. Um, oh, that's what it was. Like, every time I see, like, red-black decks with, like, Unearth and Faith Saluting and stuff like that, I'm like, why aren't we just playing, like, red-black, skeleton, mental, mid-range? That's, like actually ridiculous. I got wrecked by that deck. <laughs> like, turn one looting, pitching, like, a Skelemental yeah. and something else, and then you go turn two Thunderkin Awakener, yeah. and you're like, seven you, you discard two cards, you have to kill this one two, or you're going to do, we're gonna do it yeah, again. And I did game. kill it, and then they unearthed. <laughs> the stupid thing is haste! <laughs> it's so ridiculous, oh. the red black deck is just ridiculous. I lost four cards to it, I was like, this is, this is not good. <laughs> And then they have it's just like stupid things like Seasoned Pyromancer, Dread Horde Arcanist, yeah. literally piles of interaction. Like, like I was playing against a deck and I thought it was a little bit more all in -y. And I'm like playing, you know, Andrew's Teamer pile against Don Lee on this deck. And I'm like, he's just like, he kept a one lander and cast more spells over that game than I did. Yep. I was just like, this is stupid. <laughs> Like, he's essentially, like, it's essentially playing fair magic. You're not doing anything, like, incredibly busted. Mm -hmm. But it's still, like, it, your stuff is just all super cheap, but still, like, just as impactful as, like, two, three, four mana spells. So, I don't know. I, I think that deck's really sweet. Like, I think, uh, like, I just think it might be in a bad spot because of Hogak. Because it's, like, hard to for that deck to break through all of the X1s and, like, Hogak. Is hard to kill. Uh, I guess we have to take the bolt, right? Yeah. That's awkward. Er, mm. We would time walk them, essentially, if we didn't. Because then he has to... I mean, honestly, I actually kind of like taking the Boros Charm because it 
forces him to use the bolt on your guy. Mm -hmm. And the other way, like, if we take the bolt, he can borrow trauma still. And then, like, later he draws... Well, I guess it works out the same either way. No, I'd rather if take he draws the bolt. A, yeah, yeah, take the bolt. That way we get to keep a creature. For some reason, I was thinking, like, oh, yeah, he draws a, a removal spell. Like, well, this guy's not keeping in Searing Blaze, that's for sure. <laughs> this would be no. an awkward keep in versus the Shadow deck. <laughs> for those watching at home, if you try to do Searing Blaze a Shadow, that is a 3 3, you're going to have a very bad time. <laughs> Because both damage resolves at the same time, which changes the uh, static ability of the shadow to make it three larger. Before we check stats. Mm -hmm. Should I loot in here? I think I want to wait for one more draw than looting. Although, the funny thing about shadow, mm -hmm. um, apparently, when you cast it, if you have a Sarkins and Ceiling in play, which uh, carries about four power, and then... Uh, Seven power. Okay. If you cast a shadow, it's a thirteen thirteen on the stack, and it triggers Sarkin's unsealing for the seven power ability. Interesting, because the ability doesn't get checked until it's in the board. Yep. Everywhere else but the stack. So when you're casting it, it's a thirteen thirteen. Hmm. So it triggers like random stuff that cares about power, which is weird. That's <laughs> very weird. Because I don't think Tarmogoyf does that. It was because Tarmogoyf is a star, star. Star, star, plus one. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's so weird. I'm glad that they got rid of star, star stuff for... You know, it's just like there's zero, zeros that get pluses or mm -hmm. counters or whatever. You could cast this Gideon next turn. It's a good way to kill your opponent. Well, we're killing our opponent two turns regardless, I think. No, we're not. I know I'm discarding that. I feel like I feel like I want the Gideon. Yeah. You can just fetch the bobble here. So seven eight. Should we ping ourselves for one? Hmm. No. Because no. he's got a Boros tribe in hand, right? Yeah. Yeah, because Boros Charm plus any three mana burn spell is bad. Let's go to Helix. Um. Hmm. I'm just wondering if we purge our guy in response to keep him from gaining three. But then I guess it doesn't matter because like losing the two two is gonna make it impossible to kill him in next turn anyways. Yeah. So. So that resolve. Yeah. This way we can at least beat a Haster. I mean, it's kind of nice that he had to use that on the dude. Kind of. He's got the bolt in hand, so he can bolt us down to five. Which turns off the silent clearing, which makes the Gideon bad. Maybe, yeah, maybe the Gideon keep wasn't correct. We'll find out. Too bad this isn't little Gideon. That'd be dope. That yeah, would be pretty good. Although, I think this Gideon is more for the control matchups. It should be, yeah. Oh, this burn player's smart. He's not making a move immediately. Uh oh. Let's see if we're dead. Well, there's no point in playing this before combat. Yeah, we'll. we'll I don't think we can actually play that card. <laughs> we can't tap these silent clearings. Is this. Is that the. Uh, I'm, that's a repeat Boris Trump, right? Like he's ready to cast it? Yeah. I think so, yeah. Yeah, so. We could just crack it and draw a card. It's either cast it, and then hope he doesn't have the triple burn spell uh, to kill or us. Boros charm or Boros Charm. Or Boros Charm or something else. So, But I think giving him two turns is just as bad. Yeah. Because the only other option is to crack it, draw a card, see if we get a shadow. Because if we can get a shadow, then we kill him next turn. We get we could technically get two draws for Shadow. Is there any other Oracle. thing that we can hit? Okay, Gurmag's another hit. That's so that's what? 
three hit or four hits. Um, are there any spells that we are that are good? Mm, Inquisition, maybe. If you say Gideon OP, let's just do Gideon. Yeah, let's do it. We got this. Easy. This opponent has three lands in hand. Concede. So I'll try more And we already know he has the vault. <laughs> Gideon was OP for us. It's too strong. We couldn't handle it. <laughs> Match one in the books. Strong showing for Gideon. <laughs> Uh, yeah, double cracking definitely uh, felt like it was the uh, correct line, but someone told me Gideon was OP, so that's where we're yeah, at. Right. Cast the card, right? Gotta find out if it's bad or not. Turns out, going to seven against Burn, pretty bad. Not Gideon's fault, though. I mean, come on, obviously. Um, three draws. Great. Easiest <laughs> keep of my life. Cue the no lands arena. Do you crack the street wraith early now because we want to hit the second land? Yeah, why not? We can hit a thought seeds too. Yep. Oh, not the second land. Oh my. Okay, so we can fetch shock, we can bobble. Mm -hmm. And then we'll, that's probably it. Yep. I want to make sure we'll grab a... Black-white? Yep, black-white. Give up this nice fatal push. Liliana the Lasso, nice jump deck. Mm -mm -mm. Treetop means he's on black-green, right? Mm -hmm. Or do they play that as a one of or whatever? Mm -hmm. They sometimes play as a one of in jump. Yep. Mm, still not 100%. Yeah, because sometimes that's a one of two. <laughs> I'm telling you about so fast. Oh, yeah. So the deadest Bob in the West. Die. Okay. Run out Arcanus or run out Sculler? Um, hmm. I kind of like playing the Sculler here to see if we can mess up his hand some. That's fair. Because the, the Liliana Lasso can't kill the Sculler. Whereas she can't actually turn off the Arcanus. Right. It's an awkward interaction. I think we want to hit. I was going to say the ooze, because then Arcanus can kill, yeah, potentially. I, I do kind of like the ooze, because like, we can beat the Tarmogoyf with the big right. boys in our hand. Yeah. Lily will be a little awkward, but we can eventually put them in an awkward position anyway. So. Yeah. Whew. I think people were here for Tron. Look at the numbers drop. We're at half. Uh-oh. That's okay. That was, it was probably the stupid rant I went down. No one want to hear that, right? What? They don't want to hear a rant? I think they do. Listen, if people wanted to hear rants, I would have a career in ranting, okay? I'd be making like six figures. I think we call that a podcast. <laughs> You're not wrong. I'm too lazy to put a podcast together, though. And stupid. Did we just run out triple shadow? Or is that too greedy? Should I go shadow um... arcanus? Because if they get a pulse, we just blow us out, right? I, yeah, I kind of like the, sh the Dreadhorde Arcanus. Plus Shadow. Because I'm just going to make them 
12. Yeah, we couldn't even kill him next turn, even if we had like a fetch land. We'd have to like rip running our street raids. Surely just drop a shadow, shrink our dread horde, and pass it to us. If they're smart. Can't wait to get Field of Ruined into Tarmogoyf. They're gonna get us. Come on, opponent. The, the other two cards in your hand are bad. <laughs> Stop thinking. Oh, they knew it. Alright, yep. Yeah. Opponent read the card. What? I don't do. Uh oh. Who's? I don't know. Not good. Our poor Arcanist. And Man, we know they have a field of ruin, man. Oh no! Yeah. What's up, Blossom? Thank you so much for the second month subscription, man. Blossom says, "Go team swish." Appreciate that. Should we just thought see just a game to make our dudes bigger? Um, I think we can shock in here and then leave it for a turn. Okay. Because. Oh, well, well, this is a 4-5. Yeah, so that being a 4-5. But can we even swing with that shadow as a 6-6? Six, six? They throw two things in front of it. And we can only trade with one. So I don't even like the we swing can... here. At, uh, with a 6-6, six, six, I don't even like the swing, honestly. Because they just double block. And okay. then they can... We kill, like, what? Tarmogoyf or We kill Goyf. But then that uh, ooze can only become a 3-3. Three, three. Four four. Oh four four. No five five. Yeah, five five. Yeah, no, we pass. It's just the limited player in me is just like, no, don't do it, that's so bad. We're giving up two cards in our life for one. Well no, it's the it's the double block thing where you're yeah. like if you if you traded with both of them I'd be like hundred percent. Hundred percent. But the like when you when you only trade with one smaller creature, it's mm -hmm. just, it feels so bad. Every time I hear about Twitch Prime, I think about that uh, Amazon Fulfillment Center that's coming in over here. Yeah. Then, like, I drove, I, I drove by that. Like, I thought it was, like, more on the street you live off of. One over. Yeah, I didn't. Then I drove by it one day, and I was just like... They've done a really good job putting that up. It's pretty mm -hmm. impressive. Yeah, it's, it's... I mean, honestly, for how fast it was, like, it's... That's about to be a uh, protection from everything. Yep. That's... Well, we have the one turn. What can we rip? Removal card? We have one card. We're going to thought season, see what it is. If we get like, Battle Rage, we win. Oh, did they down tick? They down tick a little bit. I was like, how did they get two cards that turn? No. <laughs> we get Fatal Push now, which is interesting. Potentially, anyway. That is really good. We can't kill the the hex drinker with it, but we can toast that. Um, gosh, what would we what would we hit? Uh, we could ranger go get the third, or we can go get hex drinker. What? I'm just thinking about this ranger. Oh. No, we can't because hex drinker costs us one. I think we thought these right. Yeah. Although, I do have to say, if we had another mana Hex Parasite, it would be absolutely hilarious. Yeah, I think if we had one more mana Hex Parasite, it would be the play, because we can go three, fetch it, And um, then we could take out. a counter off of their Hex Drinker, and then swing and fatal <laughs> push it. <laughs> Hex Parasite is the new meta versus Jund. Alright, let's thought season, let's see what they got. I think we do run one Battle we Rage, do, right? We hope. We do have one Battle Rage. Okay, this is good. So our guys are six sixes now. Um, I think we swing and we just like pop off a goif. No, the ooze is gonna eat our uh, fatal push, so we can't kill it if we swing with our cannon. So that'd be right. Does he allow us to just cast things out of order? Uh, you have to target it. Uh. So as a result, I think we're just swinging with the triple shadow. 
Yeah, that's unfortunate. Because that'd be really cute to go... Uh, <gasps> He's doing a response. Okay. Does that change anything for us? Well, you can swing now, cast the Thoughtseize, right? And lose another two life to make your shadows 8-8s. Eight right. And then he doesn't have good blocks. Yeah. In fact, I think that allows you to swing with Scholar too, right? Um, he has to block them? So they're 8-8s, eight so he has to block at least one. Right. Yeah, no, don't we swing with the Scholar yet. Well, we should swing with her. Yeah. Swing with that, and then we get to Thalsies. Yeah. This is a 6-6, six, six, so we die. <laughs> <laughs> Depending on how he blocks here. Well, I mean, maybe we put the fear of God in it. <laughs> He's just like, what if he has that lightning bolt? Because, I mean, like, if he only blocks one, he does die to lightning bolt, so I don't know. Yeah, maybe he needs to, he's just too fearful here. He's I mean, like, like, to be fair, if we have something like, uh, if he only blocks one, or, like, if he doesn't block with Hex Drinker and our last card is a Street Wraith or something, or, like, a Dismember, mm -hmm. like, he dead. If we had Dismember, we would cast it before combat, not to kill him. He doesn't know that? <laughs> we would just instantly take out both. He called our bluff. I know, he's so good. We're done. Alright. Oh. Gosh darn green, black, and their green, black things. Okay. So this is good here, right? Um, yeah, I would assume so. Purge Same has with the purges. Too, killing lilies. Oh, Plague Engineer on Snake! <laughs> Can't level up Hex Drinker when it's dead. Lily left us grind, right? Um, yeah. Ley lines don't seem worth it. So since this is only one sided to shrink the goyfs. Yeah. Um, shenanigans, no. I don't think Fulminators are worth it. Not that either. Is Culligan's worth it for the extra recurability? I don't see my people. So those are our options here that we want to bring in. Um, I'm not really sure about Scholars here. It dies to a lot of things, and it's going to have a hard time getting in. You like Engineer, Bryce? You're supposed to take up the Inquisitions and Thoughtseize in these kind of matchups, right? But it's kind of awkward because we want the Thoughtseizes. Hmm. Like, should we just keep them too? I feel like you keep in some because you want to be able to take apart some of their key pieces. I don't know. I'm good with that swap there. And uh, Bryce makes a good point. Um, this does shut down Bob, and it can possibly get a stake out. You get two of them, we can take out some zombies. I wonder if Team or Battle Rage is good here. I think so. I think that first strike's going to be super relevant sometimes. They're going to double block with that. Blah! Battle Rage, 6-6, six, six, get you. I'm good with the swap here. Sure. I'm just always out. scared of like pump spells versus removal spells. Yeah. <laughs> Yet again, the limited player in me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this needs something to be more relevant. This doesn't. <laughs> well, no, I mean like so pump spells are really things that target your guy. Yeah. Are really bad versus things your opponent uses to target your guy. Yeah. Because you go target my guy and they're like push it and you're like. Ugh. You built a two for one for them. And they're like, thanks. And they're like, that's mean. Paul is thinking real hard. He is. He's just he's confused. He's never played against Mardu Shadow. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, I don't think I've played against Mardu Shadow either. He's always been Esper or Grixis. Yep. I mean, this is sort of like the current evolution of Mario, though, right? Right. 
Because, like, you just can't do the graveyard shenanigans with Mardu right now. I'm going to keep this. Yeah, straight fun. Wraith, Straight Wraith, Fetch, Shock. If we had Thoughtseize, we'd have a really strong turn, too. But as of right now, we don't, right? I mean, we're cycling. We're still cycling. Yeah. The old four life new hand. Oh, man. Mm. Okay. Well, play this, fetch shock, and then we'll uh, drop a turn two shadow. That shadow's getting pushed so hard. They get pushed right off a cliff. That's mean, man. What if it has feelings? I'm not the one pushing it. Your opponent is. <laughs> I'm not the mean one here. I'm not Sparta kicking him into the abyss. I feel like you'd be someone to Sparta kick someone into the abyss, man. Honestly, I'm, j I'm just not that flexible with the hips <laughs> to really get my leg up there. It's... Man, it's hard. If you're not flexible in that hip region, it's hard to get your leg all the way up there. Like, I think that's a kick we learned in Taekwondo. Like that full front. You gotta be mm -hmm. able to do that. Because it's a, a, a kick designed to push them away. Yeah. And so it's it's pretty strong. Yeah, see, there's our shadow. Ah, right? He's right there! Yes! I thought so! <laughs> If anyone didn't know, that's my teacher. That's my Taekwondo teacher. He's oh, my... that's his handle? Mm-hmm. What's up? <laughs> you just got here in perfect time, is what yeah. you're saying. We were just talking about how I could not Sparta kick someone, because I'm I'm not all loosey-goosey in the hips. Uh, do we bring, bring back a Shadow, right, instead of a Street Wraith? We don't, oh, we're, yeah. we're pretty low already. Yeah, we, just, we want actual threats. Like, if they were on the board uncontested, yeah, sure, draw a card. But... Yeah, Free have... land. Yes, we do have one more. God bless you, Ryan. <laughs> Perfect construction. It's got to be real unfortunate when this guy plays a uh, sealed one. <laughs> yeah, a field of ruin, and we're just like, uh oh, there goes our red source. This deck's like super weak to Blood Moon, huh? Every Shadow deck's weak to Blood Moon. I mean, the Grixis one kinda can play. They play like an island in two swamps. I guess. There's the Field of Ruin. Oh no. <gasps> I guess we're okay with that. We just didn't want to take our red away. All take right. me away. Alright, let's drop our double Shadow. I need a Dantos Vanguard in this deck. Hey, you know what? You're not wrong. We could play that. <laughs> that is more life for Indestructible. Can't Fatal Push that bad boy. Fatal Push that one. Holy moly, this guy. It's like a five cards in hand, too. I just want to See, point this out. is why I was terrified of with using the Team of Battle Rage. This is a million Fatal Pushes and Assassin's Trophies. I bet this bad boy's running a one of Abrupt Decay, too. Oh, <laughs> no. Well, we're going to get rid of that. Oh, my goodness. That thing is a uh, nice, clean two-for-one on that Planeswalker. Oh, my gosh. You know what card wouldn't have died to that? A Danto Vanguard. <laughs> You're right. You're onto something. <laughs> Big brain chat. Uh, I think we want to unearth, but we probably want a faithless looting beforehand. I agree with that. Pitch the blood stain and the push. I like keeping the push. He hasn't played a threat yet. In this pitch the two lands? Yeah, I kind of like pitching the two lands here. Actually, <laughs> we should have pitched the ranger captain of Eos. And then you'd be, we would have been able to unearth him. Get our shadow. Oh, we missed, mate. Misplayed. Um, I don't even know if I want to unearth here now. No, I think we unearth and just bring back a shadow. Just, like, force him to have. So he has three cards mm -hmm. left in hand. Just keep forcing him to have it. Like, technically, leaving the ranger in our hand 
like doing this, we get a shadow, he has to kill that, and then the next turn we get to go Ranger Captain of Eos, get another shadow, play that one. Like we're kind of overloading his removal spells. All right. Thank God we cast on her that turn, huh? Uh-huh. <laughs> uh well, I mean we would have just pushed her. He still would have gotten to eat our shadows. We have two. One green mana, two green mana. Ah, nice forest. That is actually a nice forest art. Who did that art? That was by John Avon. Of, of course it is. He's literally done 13 million different land arts. Let someone. Hey, I am super excited for his new playmat. I'm i using that playmat. Right oh, now. the SCG one? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is a pretty cool one. Um, I don't know. I just think Wizards needs to let some other artist, like, you know, cast some, you know, do some basic land artwork. Like maybe Svetlin Villanov, you know. He did pretty good on those uh, guild lands, right? Yeah. I definitely anyway. don't have a bias for certain uh, niche formats that I play. Not at all. Not at all. I, I can't hear it at all. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, Wizards, just get, like, he has a forest and a mountain. Give him the rest of the cycle so I can play Flipple Bolas and the other Nickel Bolas that he did. And Opposition. God, just let me beat people up. This is true, Blossom. I am literally the artist vintage bias. Okay, it's down to one card. Have we attrition them out? Although, if you notice that Ranger Captain of Eos, he's done by uh, one Ryan Pancoast, who also did Mox Tantalite. Uh, also did uh, you can't fetch that up. Mist Cutter Hydra, <laughs> which you can fetch up. Oh. You can also fetch up a uh, Dryad Militant and Young Wolf. Mm. See, Young Wolf's really good because he has both Tulsimir, uh, the legendary one from War of the Spark, the green white one, and Arlen Cord from War of the Spark. Oh, that's sweet. Yeah, he's got like a wolf tribal going on. It's like really awesome. Like it's a cool artist vintage deck. How good's Noah Bradley? Because I am a big fan of his art. He <sighs> It's really awkward because he he does a ton of lands, like yeah. tons of them. But like uh, Noah actually built a deck with using him. He has like I think he did Pyromancer's goggles, and he did like um, I think two, both Terminus two. and Bonfire. Yeah, because he was talking and about like, how he gets to like Bonfire and use goggles on it. Yeah, there's like some stuff that you can do with him. It's it's basically he, he also did Approach of the Second Sun. Okay. So there's like it's essentially just like a removal. Like it has like a bunch of like awkward to beefy, powerful removal spells, and then approach of the second sun. <laughs> but Noah Bradley does have sick lands. I actually recently took my random stack. Oh, what are, are we thinking about just thought-seizing right now? <laughs> yeah. It's just a land. Okay. Uh, so he's at 16, 8, 11, 12, 13, 14. Dang it, we're two off, even if we bring back the Thossies. That's counting the silent clearing damage, too? One off. Okay, then we should just hit him. Yep. Is there anything we want to bring back? I don't think so. No. Path our own shadow. Ooh, so good. Turn Dreadheart Arcanus into a brand new shiny land that's not in our deck. Are you sure? So that's yep. 8, 3, yep. 11, yep. 12, off. 13... 1415. Yep. Tragic. You know, I probably should have cracked that uh, clearing. Mm. And uh, see if I ripped a. Uh, I don't even know. Yeah, no, I don't. Like okay. a land, I guess. Just land shock land would have done it. <laughs> <laughs> or fetch. Or thoughtsies. Oh, yeah, we haven't played land for turns. Yeah, but... should have cracked that. I'm not going to crack it now because I just know that it's on top. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do it at his end step, you know. We'll do it. We'll do it as Incept, draw Gideon, and another spell and just not be able to cast Gideon. I don't know. Right? Or I did like, not know he did History of Banalia. Epic. That's sweet. Or Epoch. Oh, really? Did he? Yeah. He said that it doesn't look like his art style. And you get that. You get the new uh, Winds of uh, Abandon or whatever. That card's sweet. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that is the fun thing about Artist Vantage. It's like when you look at sets, you're just like, ooh, what kind of shiny new stuff did these people get? 
Oh, if anyone's not aware of what Ergus Vintage mm. is, because it's not like the most <laughs> widespread format. George, do you mind enlightening us what you know, yeah, Ergus sure. Vintage so, is so nobody's not aware? Ergus Vintage is a format that uses the vintage uh, restricted list instead of the ban list. So all cards in Magic are legal except for the cards that are on the restricted list for vintage. Um, actually, doesn't Vintage have the ban of a ban list too? It bans all the anti cards. Yeah, the anti cards. Those cards just don't actually exist in Magic. No, no. But anyways, um, so what it is is you choose an artist, and every card in your deck has to have uh, been done by that artist, and you have to have the specific artwork too. You know, it's on theme, um, and this includes basic lands too. So it does really limit the the amount of artists that can be done. Yeah. But um, you know, they've been giving new uh, basics and other lands to other artists over time. But uh, essentially, you just it, the it's open construction aside from that. You can build your deck in any way you want. Um, but there's like some, you know, very clearly powerful people. Uh, you know, like, uh, gosh, what is it? I think Mark Tadine has a deck, and he has like a bunch of like power <laughs> mm. that he did that you can play with. And like some of the old school artists, you can actually like build some silly ones. Like John Avon has like, you know, clearly he has all the basics and other stuff. And yeah. like he's. He has the um, the Empire's combo, the Throne, Crown, and Scepter. Oh, really? Yeah, he did all the artwork for all three of those, and there's like a few other really cool things that he did. But um, I think this is I good. Think, was it uh, Vincent Prost is actually like a really prolific um, artist in the last like decade of Magic, and mm -hmm. like uh, and he had, like you can literally build like he's a god. Is he the one that has the Goblins deck? Um, or am I thinking of someone else? Because I know there's like a really good red uh, black aggro deck. I was thinking about building myself. There, there's Wayne Reynolds red black, I think, okay. and it's like it, it has goblins in it, but it's more like just like pings and terminates and things like yeah. that. Um, the goblins deck actually, Svetlin Belenov did a pile of. He did like Warn Instigator, Rabble Master, mm. um, Grinzo. Like there's just there's. Uh, does he have basic land? He does. Yeah, he basic mountain and a basic forest from the guild kits. That is it, guild kit, and then the gold or guild kit. And so, it's really hard to find those basics. I ordered a pile of them from TCG Player. <laughs> <laughs> I have like twenty five of them now. I mean, they do look cool. To be fair, they're yeah. really cool looking lands. But um, but no, there's like there's all sorts of like weird stuff and like um the you know the format's not like a supported format. So there's like homebrew band lists like. Technically, Svetlan Belenov has Umazawa's Jite. Unfortunately, you know, no, it is not. It's uh, not but bad. in West Michigan, they won't let you play it because they're rude. They want to beat you up with things that have pro red and pro white. And, like, there's there's some like mono white guy that has like Bane Slayer Angel and like <laughs> Divinity of Pride, the like black white hybrid guy that gets. He's, it's like a 4 4 flying lifelink for no, 5. Yeah, yeah, he gets plus 4 plus 4. If you have 25 uh, you, or more life. Yeah. So I'm just like over here looking at this stuff. I'm like, I really wish I had a Numazawa's GT to try to maybe win this game. You know, maybe I could beat a Sphinx of the Steel win with my model red deck. Then. Don't be ridiculous. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, Therese and uh, Nielsen yeah. actually also did one. I don't know if that's, that's who you're uh, that's... referencing, Possum. But, um, yeah, it has to be. She has actually like a really... Because she did a pile of like... So, so there's like a green-white deck and a blue-white deck. And like the green-white deck is hilarious because you get... Uh, there's like a, the not the new five mana Nissa, but the old one where like you make the land a five five, and then like you can crack her for six to get the emblem, um, or it's whenever you play like a land, you draw a card. For us, yeah, 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 untap for forest, and then like you get um original Garrick Wildspeaker, and some other stuff, and like she just has like really she has like I think I think actually you're playing her path there. She has that path artwork. Yeah. Or, no, that's Rebecca Gway. Yeah, What's that? I, that's the one that I think Andrew's obsessed oh, with. Oh no, right? no, Therese Nielsen did swords if I remember okay. correctly. Yeah, the boss was correct. That all the, she did a bunch of promo planeswalkers and like she's gotten some like other artworks too. Like she has like her deck is really expensive because a lot of it's like limited edition promos. Promo cards. So it's like, ooh, <laughs> I was trying to get those. I think there's also some guy who did all the new sword artworks. Too, and he has an artist vintage, so you just have like a pile of swords in a deck. Oh, that seems sweet. <laughs> I think there's also a guy who did, um, it's the same guy who did Sarkin Dragon Speaker, also did a bunch of like random dragons, too. Okay, so which also like 
Svetlan Velenov did a pile of dragons as well. He did like Thundermaw Hellkite, um, the new Skargan Hellkite. Uh, it's like some seven mana dragon from Theros. So it was like a rare where it's like a seven mana five five flare that like comes in and shoots a target equal to mountains you control. Oh, okay. Which is like hilarious in a mono red deck, right? You just have a pile of mountains and you're like, all right, seven. Yeah. But uh, I do believe there are pretty budget decks uh, that are friendly, but the you can, the ceiling is also really. Oh high. yeah, there's like there, yeah, there are, like some of the artists. Yeah, it's like it's pretty restrictive because like their basics are like all like uh the guy who did the GP promo basics. Mm -hmm. I think he those are his only basics. Okay. Um, and then there's like, but um the Svetlana Velenov deck I did actually wasn't that expensive. Like um Chain Whirlers and Rabble Masters and uh, Warren and Sigurds did go up recently, but um. Aside from that, it's like honestly, I think I built a deck for like less than seventy bucks. Yeah, I was so like, like when I was looking at, I was looking at decks between the fifty and seventy range. Yeah, like there's a bunch of them that like, and I mean like you pay that much for a popper deck, mm -hmm. and so so like you know think of it that way. Like there's a lot of like a lot of the cards you play are like literal bulk rares. So, um, it's it's a fairly like cheap format. You can just pick an artist that you like, or you know, um. Like, I picked Svetlan Velenov because, like, he did a bunch of, like, really cool uh, artworks. Like, I, you know, I, I like the way he draws goblins and things mm -hmm. like that. He also did Nicol Bolas, but I then discovered later that he didn't have the lands to cast Nicol Bolas. But, uh, although, the next set, I've seen some, you know, whisperings mm -hmm. in the vintage artist community where Svetlan Velenov has done some artwork that shows landscapes, so... All you other vintage artist constructed players better be uh, better be ready for some flipple boluses and oppositions if you get some blue mana. I'm just <laughs> I'm just pie in the sky right now, man. Oh yeah, swamp swamps and islands, give them to me. I don't even need the planes, even though he's got things like legions landing and other stupid. Myth. He's done so many busted cards, <laughs> like it's it's silly. Yeah, I uh, I should do it. We like in the West Michigan, we have a monthly. Uh, events for mm -hmm. me to play it, so yep. it's pretty sweet. They do, like, uh, Sundays, they'll do, like, monthly events. Um, the place that runs them, it's usually, the, like, a lot of the players are, like, employees at the store, so mm -hmm. it's usually, you know, they'll, like, they'll, like, close the store, but they'll, you know, they'll have the people there for the uh, vintage artists constructed, which is, like, kind of nice, because it's that, like, big store collector tours, yeah. and, like, uh, it's, like, very quiet, you know? <laughs> There's literally, you know, you got... You have like eight people or so, and you just play some vintage artist constructed. But don't play Svetlin Villanova Mono Red there. You'll you'll get dumpstered. <laughs> get, you'll get beat up. But um, yeah, I don't think it'd be too expensive for you to get into a Doctor Ninja. And like, it really is like a yeah, like just uh, I you know obviously like. Some of the artists like John Avon, Therese Nielsen, Rebecca Kawhi, like popular artists are going to be more expensive because their cards usually are, they have more promos and other things mm -hmm. like that. But there's also, there's like a million different red decks you can build. Like if you're, if you're fine playing some burn spells and like some of them are actually like kind of interesting how they, the spells they interact because you play some really wacky stuff because like mm -hmm. you never would play these cards in a normal constructed format. Yeah, it feels like you're split between doing like a cube play but then you, like, didn't get quite the draft you wanted. Mm -hmm. So you're doing some, like, really oppressive things and then not doing anything with it. Yeah. And if you're also, uh, I, I don't know if you're um, from the area, I don't recognize your screen name or anything like that, but, but um, Popper is a f supported format by Wizards now, um, mm -hmm. and that's a fairly cheap format, and there's some pretty cool things going on with it now. They, like, they banned out a lot. Like, I played Popper years and years and years ago, um, and like, there's some like one man. They had like decks. They had a they had a storm deck that was almost legacy storm. Like it was it was that right. You were dying on turn one and two consistently. Um, and, and so like the format has come a long way from there. Like they all pretty much all the storm cards have been banned out. They've uh, they banned a lot of the like flicker blink infinite yep. combos. Um, they recently banned like gush. Days and there's one other card. They call it Blue Monday for Popper. They just they banned like three really good blue cards and like killed a lot of those decks. Except they're still playing them. <laughs> You're just not the most busted, you know, thing on the block. But um 
No, it's a really fun format. It's very interesting. It has a lot of intricacies and uh, play to it like Legacy does. Although, to be fair, with Gush and Days leaving the format, some of that kind of exits. But there's a lot of, you know, fun things. Like, there's, like, the Tron deck is actually, like, somewhat okay. It's, like, one of the best decks, right? Right now? Because the new... Uh, yeah, Arkham's like, they have the, Astrolab the Arkham's Astrolabe. But it is one of the... Like, it beats up all the, like, control decks. The decks that don't have good ways of killing it. Like, it just beats up on those decks. But it also doesn't have a good way of stopping the, like, play-to-the-board creature decks. Mm -hmm. There's just no real good sweepers yeah. in the format. So, like, Mono Green Aggro and... Um, I think people are sleeping on slivers right now. Because uh, Winding Way is busted. Like, two mana, draw two plus mm -hmm. is very good in a, in a green-white deck. Um, but yeah, like, it's it's a it's a fun format. And there's, like, there's counterplay and all that stuff. There's, like, there's pretty much, like, a bunch of the, like, traditional archetypes that you're used to. And, like, blue isn't dead by any means. You can still play a Delver deck. Like, it's still there. It's not busted, but it's still good. You still have counterspell... And exclude and vapor snag and like uh like what was it the the spire golem which is the like affinity for islands mm -hmm. it's like a six mana two four flyer but like you get like casting on turn three a two four flyer um using the affinity for islands is pretty powerful and then you still have things like ninja of the deep power and all sorts of stuff like that there's a, the the format with modern horizons has a lot of added cards to it and it's it's still and like because blue got a lot of cards taken away from it. There's a lot of exploring to do in the format still. So I think it's not solved by any means. Um, and like Tron will be good, but there's ways to combat it. You know, like it's just a, it's more of a value deck than yeah. anything. It's not the Tron we know from modern. Right. That's for sure. I'm very interested in playing Tron and I, I wonder why. Yeah, right? Yeah. But Noah's playing it too. And it's like oh, I, you weird. Know, I love me some weird. mystical teachings, but like with that deck running around, you have to have a way of killing them. Like yeah. you, like you're gonna get put in the ground eventually. Nice. I love Warp World so much. War, yeah, Warp World is like I, I have some great memories from playing at Alpha Players with um Biddy. Biddy. <laughs> yeah, God, Biddy. Like literally every EDH. Like, when it was in standard, every standard deck, like, he always played Warp World. And it was just hilarious watching him, like, put these things together. Right. And, like, to be fair, Warp World at that, like, when it first was put into standard, there was an actual, like, red-green deck that, like, kind yes. of beat up on people with yeah. it. You would play, like, Fairhaven Elf and stuff like that to, like, mm -hmm. ramp yourself, so you're always did it. And then you would get the uh, dragons, the um, eight mana up Garden Hellkite. Garden Hellkite. And I man. think it also played, um, because Karthus, Tyrant of Jungle, was legal in that, too, right? Or, like, uh, there were, like, some other... There was something that there allowed was, you there to, There was like, another way off. Yeah. But it was essentially... <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, it was like every EDH night. I feel like I always had to like sit down once again against them because my decks also did very well with it because I was playing Maelstrom Wander. So then like I'll be like, all right, let's who get the better work for them, Okay, <laughs> am I going infinite combo here? Or you go in and gonna kill me? Okay, what's what's going on? I'm willing to test this out, see how it goes. All right. Oh my lord. I just have to say, Epoch, I still, one of my favorite decks uh, was inspired by you. I remember playing at Alpha Players with you. Uh, and you're on some mono green deck, and you were running um, Relic of Progenitus. Or not Relic of Progenitus. Um, the, the Rupture Spire. The, the original land that you have to pay, like, comes in play tap, pay one or sack it. And protects for any color mana at Comet. You know, just pretty innocuous land. Mm -hmm. But, um... There were no brass cities or anything like that. Same like I forget what uh, what Epoch was doing with it, and so but I saw it and I was playing mono white at the time, and I, I liked the rupture spire idea so much. I was just like, you can put in I. Actually, no, I think it was Obelisk of Alara that you were playing with it. Like he was playing mm -hmm. like a ramp deck that ramped out Obelisk of Alara, and he could activate all parts of it. Yeah. And I was just like, that's really cool, because I'm playing Mono White Felidar Sovereign with a Mary of the Sky Ruin, and I'm essentially Mono White Control, and this is a card that allows me to, like, loot, shoot them for three, kill things with two toughness or less, give some of my lifelinky guys plus four, plus four, 
or game five. And, oh my lord, I can't tell you how many times I've made some of the, like, grinders in the area at the time rage so hard when they'd be playing Jund and Black Red Vamps, mm -hmm. and I'm playing four main deck Firewalkers and four Devout Lightcasters <laughs> just in the main deck. Right. And uh, just, like, jamming all that. Like, I had a guy who played the, like, there's, like, a vampire kick spell where, like, you drain them for life, and if you if you tap a vampire and kick it, uh, you gain that much life. And then Sanguine Bonds was in that format, too. So, like, you would cast that on five and then do that one on six, and then just snap them off. Like, they'd lose <laughs> half their life, you'd gain life, and then they'd lose it, the other half. You won that game? We <laughs> did. <laughs> Easy clap. But yeah, I so that was one of my favorite plays with that deck was like I, I had called a judge or I think it was uh, Art at the time mm -hmm. or maybe it was Contra I can't remember but like I called him and I was just like, is there a chance for me to respond between the me losing the life here and him gaining life? Is this like yes? There's a chance. I was like, cool. It's like all right, I lose half my life, you gain that life. Single bond trigger on the stack, gain five with Obelisk of Alara. And we, he just looked at it, he was just like, yup. And I was like, alright, I'll go to five. <laughs> so Untap with Felidar Sovereign and Wall. And then, like, I gain, like I think I gave my Felidar Sovereign, like, um, plus four, plus four, hit for eight, Wall of Reverence trigger at the end of the turn, gain another eight, and I was suddenly at 21. <laughs> <laughs> it was so silly. Like, it was, I loved that deck so much. Like, that's, that, that is... I think like everybody has like these pet decks that you like can get in like, oh, well, I mean, like format, and you're like, I love this deck so much. I wasn't super competitive back then yet, and so like I was still exploring with these like really. I I do too. I I miss a lot as well. I really hope we go back there, and I hope that at some point, like I really want them to like jam Obelisk of Alar into like a core set again, like core set twenty twenty one. Just give me some Obelisk of Alar. I'll play some garbage five color to play that card again. Uh, <laughs> I think you will, honestly. You'll see it. Yeah, like, I, I mean, it's... Like, there's so much going on in that plane, right? Because, like, mm -hmm. like the storyline as after we left it, like, essentially, Johnny kicked out Nicol Bolas from the Conflux, merged it all together, and now it's one singular plane again. So, like, there's all sorts of cool kind stuff. I'm trying to hand my opponent cube. Your opponent's bad at Tron. That's what we're seeing here. They do have really cool promos for their sure. list of... Reasonable. Wow, these path tags don't match. Uh, that's what happens when you borrow cards. You can't just, like, choose the arrow marks? Uh, I don't even know. Like, I feel like there's a lot of work to it. <laughs> Pat the Ballista got him. You can just run a Dreadhorde out in front yeah. of it. <laughs> yeah. We're not giving them a great source. Like, yeah, I, was like, I don't want to give them they a great Make source. them ghost quarter themselves to get that. I'm going like, to take your other ballista if you don't cast it. Oh my gosh. Dude. What is this Luxac ripping the green source? It's not even good in his hands. <laughs> no, because he's got nothing <laughs> going on. Literally nothing. I'm going to take the other ballista from him. We don't actually play that because it just no, immediately it dies, die. but oh swing. baby. Can't wait to get some ballista. There um we were listening to a podcast about yesterday on the way back from Ohio and we were listening on uh, the top five draft formats and they're talking about how Alara, even though it's really cool in concept, they really messed up because like it felt like the colors were really difficult to do. Um and it made a lot of sense. And I'm like, if they do go back, I really hope that they fix it because they were talking about how Dominero was one of like the best draft formats. It was so enjoyable. And it was because they did it right. They, they made it so you could go into three colors very easily. You could also do two colors if you wanted. Wait, Dominaria. Was I think it was what they said. Or was it uh, Cons? Was Con, it? Okay. Cons had the triple. Cons, I agree. Cons yeah. was a great multicolor draft format. Um, I think they said both, though. Which one, uh, which one has the... the, the Dominar is the one that's like a heavy mono color theme because it oh, has the like it goblin might, chain it might whirler be vanilla marshall. It's probably uh, cons that they're talking about because they had the new the, the new tries in there. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, the okay. the wedges as they call them. Yeah. Um, 
I'm just passing. Yeah, um, they said that they did that really well when they were talking about how it was like dis uh, they did a great job making it so you could go into the three colors very easily, not feel punished. The gold cards um, were rewarding. This guy's just walking in trying like I do. <laughs> you don't even have to keep good hands with trying, apparently. Mm hmm. Like, if you're not blocking, why aren't you swinging? He doesn't know. Um, there's things that are... <laughs> He might have actually just. Like, that pause makes me think that he legitimately clicked through it. No, like, although I was recently hearing about a thing where people were like, they really didn't like War of the Spark. Uh, it was um, a video that I watched from uh, the professor, the Tolarian Academy professor. Mm -hmm. the, everyone knows him by the professor. Yes. I I'm pathing here, but I should have done a response to this. I, no. I'm giving him the mana so he can get the worm crawl, then I'm going to path that as well. I need to put a thread on board. Yeah. But, um, well, actually, to be fair, this way, we actually, um, yeah. can put Death Shadow on the board. Right. Oh, did he? He, he only shot us for one. Oh, uh, okay. That's fair. Because he wants the land. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like, apparently people didn't like War of the Spark draft. Which I thought, like, I love it. Like, I mm -hmm. love War of the Spark. Although, I mean, like, maybe I'm just biased because I just constantly dunk people, <laughs> uh, in that format, but... I don't know, that's, I thought it was fun, and, uh, but apparently people didn't like it, the, like, Planeswalkers of Uncommon, I didn't think it was, like, that, like, I think there were a couple of them, like, I think Angrath was a little bit too good at Uncommon. Um, I was told that, um, the reason they felt it was so powerful is because Planeswalkers and Limited are so powerful. And they said the top end was so good. Like, if you got particular Planeswalkers, it just made everything else just meaningless. And in a in a draft format or a sealed format, like, that makes it kind of, like, a bummer, right? Like So, yeah, they're, like, one of... Honestly, I felt like it wasn't so much the fault of the Planeswalkers, but, um... Like, so, some of the, like, Mythic one, like... Although, I mean, like, I remember going 0-2 in a draft with a Liliana Dreadhorde General in a deck. That I cast like almost every game, mm -hmm. <sighs> but I think it's more um, the issue with the gods. Okay. Like the gods are just stupid. The mechanic where they just shuffle in third from the top is like, yeah, it's stupid strong. Yeah, like you just can't get rid of it. They're all like very powerful and very reasonably statted. Um, and at the point where in the game where you're like casting them, like drawing them two turns later, is just very powerful. Um, I think they did those kind of like ruined the format a lot because they're just like so much more powerful than all the other cards. And um, I do think some of the planeswalkers, like uh, the Nissa, this is just stupid. <laughs> Still stupid. Yeah, like she's just very dumb. Like she's a very powerful planeswalker. And uh, what is it? A lot of them, though, like I think, like. So a lot of them are based on like how good their static is in a limited format, whereas mm -hmm. like Angrath is very powerful. Like four mana to make a two two is not that great, but four mana make a two two, make it a four four next turn, and then like giving your entire team a menace mm -hmm. is pretty busted. Yeah, especially when one of the good color pairs was green black, and if you go Angrath on turn four, Challenger Troll on turn five, all of your creatures that are power four and up are literally unblockable. Right. Because they can only be blocked by one, but they have menace too, so they can't block. <laughs> but, um... Yeah, so, like, there are a few, like, mistakes that they made with the format, but, like, honestly, like, the plane... Like, a lot of the Planeswalkers at Uncommon were... There's, like, Sahili. Sahili is, like, not even that powerful. Mm -hmm. Like, they're, like, the, you have to, like, construct a deck around her, and that, like... Like, either her static is good in your deck, or her down tick is good in your deck and you couldn't really do both. Um it was like really hard to set it up. But I don't know, like I, I thought the format was fun. There's a lot of like really I, I felt like you could go any color pair that you wanted. Okay. And it was it was fine. Like the honestly I think one of the decks that was really underrated in the format was Red Black Sacrifice. Because like a lot of the cards were just really garbage out of outside of that archetype mm -hmm. 
Um, but in the archetype, they're absolutely amazing. And, like, a lot of the times, like, you know, sure, you can play play. Like, there's a game where I was playing Red Black Sacrifice, my guy had a Domri on board and an Ugin. And I, like, untapped, played three spells, killed his walkers, and then won the game. <laughs> like, he had no <laughs> cards in hand left. Right. Because, like, you, you have things like Spark Harvest at one and, like, other spells that can target Planeswalkers at common. You know, like... I don't think the Planeswalkers at Uncommon was the problem with the format. I think it was the power level of some of the rares and mythics. Mm -hmm. it just made it too strong. Yeah, like, there, it was just too bomby. Like, you can see that with, like, every limited format that's, like, it's has really good, like, core concepts, but then they just print rares that are just too powerful. Right. And it's just, like... Cool. Yeah, and, and that's always uh, listening to uh, Sutcliffe and uh, LSV talk about their favorite formats for draft and why it was good. Um, they were talking about how they were comparing, at one point, um, Rise of Eldrazi against Triple Innistrad, because both are considered, you know, fantastic formats. This hand just loses to a lot. It really does. I can deal with this. Um, they were talking about how this... Um, you have this issue where uh, Rise of Eldrazi punishes you for doing what you think you should be doing. Like, if you go with the themes and, like, reasonable decisions um, with the deck, you actually get punished for it. Like, picking up a two-mana bear that has a reasonable stat on it, an effect on it, uh, the, they're using what? Uh, oh, glory seeker. Yeah. There's like, that's, for most, format, uh, for most formats you're going to play, that's a very good card. Yeah, it, like it, it takes all of your limited knowledge and turns it on the head. Yeah, and they said because of that it's just really, really bad. Um, I don't know. I kind of like that because it takes like because as someone who does a lot of limited, it's really refreshing when you have that. When it ta when you have to like sit down and you have to reevaluate how some cards work, and I like and I think that's how no we're, no. So like they're saying that's very true. It's good for the people that do draft a lot, but it's too punishing for people that aren't. And don't. Like, if you just pick it up and play it, as a draft format, it shouldn't be that punishing as a new player, is what they're talking about. Which I thought was... It's something I, I guess that's fair, about. yeah. Like, Rise of the Eldrazi, like, you needed to know the archetypes. Mm -hmm. um, and there were, like, some very clear winning arc. Although there were, there were a ton of them. And, like, honestly, I don't even necessarily agree with their statement that, like... Bears are bad in that format because there is literally a raid bombardment archetype, which is the three man enchantment that reads whenever you swing with a creature power two or less, you mm -hmm. can ping the opponent for one. Right. And grizzly bears with random stats on them are pretty good in that. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, like, I mean, that, like, I, it's been a while since I played that format. I didn't play a ton of it. Um, I mean, I played a lot of it, but not a ton of it. But. <laughs> That was sort of back before I became good at limited. <laughs> um, so there's also, you know, my misunderstanding of that. But, like, there are just a lot of archetypes. And, like, I mean, I don't know. I feel like a new player is going to pick up, like, a removal spell good. Like, I mean, there's a freaking, like, ramp deck. Like, yeah. traditional ramp, like, big idiots. Like, yeah. I feel like new players would gravitate towards these big, dumb Eldrazis. And then they're like... Uh, like, I feel like they're going to be smart enough to be like, hey, this guy that, you know, gets me another land, or this guy that taps for mana is going to allow me to cast this big dumb idiot. You know, like, so, I feel, I don't know, I feel like that's kind of underestimating how good new players are at, like, decision making and, like, the things that they sort of gravitate towards. Because I feel like, more often than not, um, new players are are not fans of the, like, more vanilla two ones that maybe have, like, a stat, like, a Vigilance or something on that. Like, new players don't like that card as much. Right. They like the big, flashy, powerful cards, like the mm -hmm. five drops, you know? Like in like in M20, there's this, like, 5-4 with Trample that when it dies, it draws a card. That's, like, that's a card that, like, a new player who's a fan of green, they're going to be like, this card's Awesome. Right. And they're gonna look at the like the two mana the like the two two for two that has vigilance, they're gonna like this card's this card's garbage. Why would mm -hmm. I play this card? And they're going you know, we're gonna play the more powerful card and things like that. And like I think um you know, Sutcliffe and LSV like play a lot of limited, like they a do. lot a lot. They so do. like I think they might be a little bit 
off base with like what newer players will gravitate towards? No, they were just talking about like not necessarily like uh, in the aspect of like you know you can't do it. They're just worried that the themes in the deck are actually so underwhelming that it punishes you. If you get what I'm saying, like um, you get put in a trap for doing going and taking that. Idea. Oh, okay. Well, so I think that's just like a design mistake in like a lot of limited formats where like they have themes for mm -hmm. like uh, like um gosh, there's been there's been a few of them like so, I mean like some of the like when we go to Ravnica, some of the limited formats are like really garbage because mm -hmm. like some of the guilds are just unplayable. Like right. um like gosh, Demir in Gate Crash, like mm -hmm. a lot of people will always say, like, oh well, if you're the only Demir player, it's perfectly fine. It's just like, well, like that's not a good statement to be on, right? Yeah, now. like it, it. It's just really bad because like there's the the like more playable blue deck is when that format was Simic, and Simic eats up a lot of your good blue spells, like a lot, a lot of your good blue spells. Um. So I don't know. Like I think. I think it's not so much like a design that's like not new player friendly and it's more um just like bad design. Like they didn't push it far enough. Yeah. Like and I like there's so many times where I see mechanics and I'm like they could have pushed it farther. Like very safely pushed it farther. Mm -hmm. And I think um that's like one of their big downfalls in a lot of the formats. Like I know a lot of people in War of the Spark Draft like didn't like green white. Like I thought it was fine, but um, a lot of people didn't like because they didn't feel it was supported enough. And I think it was more like it's not so much that it was supported enough as that like green white needed a lot of the like good green commons that everyone else was trying to get to. Right. So because it was like plus one plus one counters and proliferate. That's the green white theme in War, and um. A lot of other people want those good proliferate cards like Bloom Hulk, Pollen Bright Druid, Evolution Sage. Those are all like stupidly high picks in that format. Um, so I think that's more of like a kind of like, like eh, there's a lot of people that eat into the kind of thing. And more so that it's not good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I uh, was just kind of taking it in their thoughts and all that stuff yeah. because it's, you know, I'm not a big limited player. It's not my jam. Uh, I enjoy limited. I enjoy cubing, but I don't enjoy limited in the structural sense. So, I I do not like sealed. A lot of like sealed takes a lot of the issues with limited. Like like War of the Spark sealed has to be garbage. Like an absolute dumpster fire, because like it's literally you just look at your mythics and you're like, all right, I'm playing these mythics. Yep. I, like yeah. I'll, I I will do sealed at a. You know, a big event for fun. That's what I feel that it's for. Mm -hmm. We did here. But then, like, limited GPs are... I wish limited GPs were literally just, like, they no-sealed all draft. Like, you all showed up and you got into draft pods, you drafted, and then you played your pod. And then you moved on, like, and then, like, they did it, like, on the Pro Tour, where mm -hmm. you have multiple drafts that you do. And I think that, like, I think that would be way better, and it would show off way more of limited player skills, whereas, like, Current limited GPs are just like, all right. I oh yeah, I, 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 I went to GP up. Detroit, burnt money. Like, can you can you imagine like going to uh, the a GP a limited GP during the time where Pack Rat was in limited mm -hmm. uh, when we did RTR? Did you get Pack Rat? No. Did you have a way to remove it? No. <laughs> Guess I win. Yeah, right. I mean, like, not everyone had Pack Rat, but like, you literally open Pack Rat in your pool, and like, there were people that just like they played like five. The five black cards and pack rat that they opened, mm -hmm. and then all swamps. Yeah, it was just like, oh, yeah, here we go. Do you have electricery? No, all right, die. <laughs> like, it's so dumb. And it's like electricery that turn that I play. Mm hmm. Yeah, like it. That, that card was a mistake. That, that card, like, I love how bad that card was in constructed. It they still played it. I was like, it wasn't that bad in constructed. It was they played. really had to like alter their deck for it, but like. It was more that, like, nothing else but Mono Black was playable at that time, and Pack Rat was just, like, it's multiple card. It, it was essentially card advantage in your black deck. Mm -hmm. um, 
and that's why they played it. It, wasn't well, so it was much also like, played as a four of in the sideboard because some decks literally couldn't beat it. And you yeah, like there are, yeah. but I mean, like those are the mono black was just way too good in that format. <laughs> God. Yeah, I mean, yeah, mono black goes mono black versus mono blue, and then the variants of mono black to beat a mono black. Yeah, because there, it was like so you had like mono black, and then the next level was black white, mm -hmm. um, and then the next level after that was um, black red. No, was it black red? I'm pretty sure it was black red. Because it was, uh, it was a the the color pair that they did was um, it could be uh, blood baron of Viscopa. Because mm -hmm. that was the big thing about black white. Black yeah. white, you jumped into white to get blood baron of physical, but mm -hmm. pro white, pro black, lifelink, four four vigilance mm -hmm. became a big monster once you got them to ten or less life. Um, Thanks so for you the just follow Yoko naked, doing the Lord's work. So is this guy? Holy smokes, gut shot on the stack. Yeah, I know we haven't been talking about these matches because, because I mean, you're kind of boring. <laughs> <laughs> But, um... Wow. You know what? Wow. It's, wow. We've seen Death Shadow a lot. Like, this is a cool build of Death Shadow. I think Ranger of Eos is a very interesting card. Or Ranger Captain of Eos, sorry. Um, I mean, Ranger of Eos is also pretty interesting. But, um... I don't know, like, some of these men have, like, been against Tron. It's just like, you got it or you don't. You know, like... <laughs> That's modern, man. Yeah, I know. Like that's really it's just not a all good thing, but that's modern. It's, it is, and like it's it's boring. Like it really is kind of boring. Like especially when you're playing the interactive deck and you just like you interact with them, and they top deck you, and you're like, cool. <laughs> Glad that this happened. It's blood crypt, right? Yeah, I was trying to see. Yeah. Or can or oh no we're at fourteen or oh no we'll go to twelve yeah blood yeah. lets us cast both shadows mm -hmm. do we want to cast both shadows uh no I'm gonna looting I think okay and cast one shadow uh, mm, no I don't even know if you do that I think you save it for next turn just just what looting or the shadow the shadow yeah I'm gonna loot though yeah it's, it's loot. <sighs> Oh, they're playing Meme Kid or something. I think I'd discard Bloodstained Mire and Goblet Shrine. I want to keep the Bloodstained Mire. You need to lose through life. <laughs> Make these shadows thick. I think they're going to do a good job of doing that for us. I guess losing through life is pretty relevant. I mean, like, it's, it's either one or three life, right? So, like, yeah. I just want to be able to make the shadows bigger than one one's currently. <laughs> right, right. Because I don't want to cast one ones into gut shots or lava darts. Yeah. I don't know. Is Spellbomb doing a lot here? Oh, uh, he's got belt, belt, bedlam reveler oh, in here. Okay. So I need to keep it. Yeah. I'm gonna pop it. Uh, the only awkward part is I. I mean, honestly, I kind of want to discard like. Scholar. Plains. Scholar. Yes. Yeah, Scholar seems fine. So plain Scholar. Sure. I can't crack the spell bomb, but I think I need to let go of it. Because otherwise he's casting Reveler, and that's going to be a problem. Yeah, we can't draw the card off of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Modern, modern is not in a great spot, unfortunately. I love Modern, but it's it's not there. Yeah. They, like, they've literally abandoned their uh, philosophy of turn 4 format. Oh yeah, the, not to mention their their aggressive banning that they set out in the format originally. Mm -hmm. They're like, we're going to aggressively ban and things like that. Yeah, then, then, you know, Splinter Twin got banned, people were up in arms about that, and then Pod got banned, and everyone was all chuffed about their foil pod decks that they just bought and being banned. It's like... I think the secondary market, honestly, is what has been the largest detriment to modern... Right. Um, because... I think I just thought sees here. Go to seven. Good chance I took a burn spell from him. Drop both shadows. Sure. Sounds good. We're going to go pretty well here in life. I already have another swamp. I was going to say... No, we don't have another swamp. Uh, probably just take that man Morphos. Right? He can cast it. Four. He has to draw a land to cast it. Which is pretty good. Yeah, I guess we do just replay the red, the, the 
Campbell or Adam Sand. Yeah. Do, Do we, we just play the shot? No, play one to... shadow and yeah, tap shrine. Yeah. I think that's what we do. Yeah, I uh, I I, I did wish that they would have just done more some progressive bands to keep the format a turn four format, and then uh, like the bands that I want to see now wouldn't be so drastic because I want to ban like ten or, cards. Yeah, like, <laughs> I, I want to ban like twenty cards. Like, I don't know, man. There's a lot of like, there's a million cards on my my modern shit list. Language. Sorry, uh, <clears throat> my bad. <laughs> No, um, I mean, just, I just hate these cards so much. I mean, like, there's, like, there's a Mox Opal Simeon Spear Guide, Faithless Looting. I mean, like, I didn't start with Hogak, because that's just the duh. Um, gosh, what else is there? I want to ban Karn the Great Creator, because I think if the format ever becomes healthy, that card becomes a detriment to diversity in Modern, mm -hmm. because it encourage like... It's kind of just the best thing you can do with your big mana. Like, when you're in a healthy modern format. Like, the lock is just too good. Too good. Um, and, like, you know, like, when Mono Green Control adapted that, I was just like... You know, it's like Tron, Mono Green Control, literally anything that produces piles of consistent mana. It's just like, yeah. You know, like, the, uh, the um, Dice Factory deck plays KGC. Yeah, that's his win condition now. Yeah. So, like, literally every single one of these, like, artifacts slash big Island does packs. need to be banned, Lex. You're absolutely right. Chalice and Bridge probably needs to go, too. Uh, like, <laughs> it, literally taking the format and, like, deleting 9th and 8th edition from it. Yeah, 8th edition was the mistake. I mean, I'd be fine with 9th edition and just get rid of Tron Lands, too. I no, think you can just ban the Tron Lands. just whole ninth edition too. There's a bunch of like random garbage like like I want Blood Moon and Choke gone too. I literally want these cards that make modern a non game format and I want them gone. <laughs> I don't want them there. Yeah. We swing, he has to block. Uh, I would probably defer to your judgment on that being the best deck falls to found me because uh, this is my first time playing it. That makes sense. I've seen people swap between the two, and uh, Straight Wraith possibly would be the correct thing just to not worry about. If he doesn't block, I'm just going for the win. Okay. I'm just... It seems, it seems so hard to get your Death Shadows online without the Street Wraiths. Yeah, it does. I don't need the other Shadow. Maybe just go with the... I mean, like... Well, I get, well, no, with Bob losing the line. Bob losing You have to line. cut the Gurmag at, at that point, though, right? I would say so. Because, like, you... But that's not, like, a, a terrible thing, I guess. Because this list only plays one of. Yeah. I also, I'd rather be on, like, Seasoned Pyromancer at that point. It'd be, like, more unearthed shenanigans. The games where Bob flips up nothing but one man spells and you get the flashback all of them into pretty cool. That's that is fair. There's a lot of cheap interaction in the deck. Like Bob does seem pretty good. The also thing, being able to unearth it. The one thing I wish we had in this deck would be bolts that we just don't have them and I don't know. I feel like I want them. Yeah, it is kind of weird. Like, I feel like the deck is almost caught between like I don't know. I it's like trying to be like a mid range. Is the lane line good enough with Bedlam Burbler, or is that just too cute? If they were, if I saw lava darts, and like I would hundred percent put them on Phoenix. But I didn't. Yeah. So like maybe like we won game one, so like we can kind of sideboard a little loose. Like yeah, purge is like great. Mm -hmm. uh, I can imagine. <laughs> Dude, Plague Engineer on Human shrinks both Soul Scar Mage and Monastery Swift Spear. Not wrong. Cold Against Me is probably good enough, right? Yeah, it's an extra burn spell. I don't think everything else is. Is Lily good enough? I don't. It doesn't kill anything, right? Yeah, it really doesn't. So, I just kind of want to get all the Thossies to that. Like, <laughs> this is like another burn style matchup. So it's like Thossies and Street Race are kind of trash. Let's play Magic. They almost could have probably just boarded out 
a street wraith for the Gideon. Because I have another beefy boy. Doesn't seem unreasonable. We're going to be taking so much damage. I'm keeping it. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, uh... Oh, he... he falls to counties. I'm wondering if you... Oh, yeah, go list. for it. I'm down. I probably wouldn't play it right away just because we got a lot of things queued up. Oh, boy. I can't oh. wait to kill that. Yeah, that thing is uh, terrifying and also very dead. Cause, but this opponent's deck I thought was the memekin list for a bit when I was looking at some of the cards, and for sure Actually is. is the memekin. I wouldn't even let him attack them. Well, well no, I'm allowed to attack. I'm allowed to go through this whole thing. Okay, that's fair. He can, yeah. he can live his life. I do agree, Lucid Hope. Bolts could be fun. Like, especially if we do, um... Like, I'm hoping Dicatomy's list just has bolts in them, because if he's up on Arcanus... Yep, four bolts. Yeah, Arcanus seems very good with bolts. Four Shadows, four Confidants, four Arcanus, four Ranger Captains. Push, Inks, Bolts, Pass. Yeah, this looks like a way more aggressive version, so they're playing two Battle Rages in mm -hmm. it. Instead of just a one-off. Cuts the top end. You can pretty much you can get everything back for spells other than the battle rage. And here the gut seems kind of interesting. In I mean, side. it's probably just necessary in the format. Is that a one laner and he pitched the land? Hmm. I can't be right. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Okay. I mean, playing the deck that he's playing can't be right. <laughs> so, I mean, like... It's like quality. I mean, it's a quality meme. This is not Mono Red Prowess Lucid Hope. This, this is... is a... This is Mono Red Storm. This deck casts a Storm spell that costs one mana and says uh, target creature can't block this turn. And then it uses that blister coil weird and um, the rare dude to that eats spells off the stack. Yeah. Yeah, you've died to that thing on stream. Yeah. This is this is like your nemesis. Uh, I died to the mono red uh, Swiss Fury deck at, at the open too. The guy was like Swiss Fury one, yeah. Swiss Fury, Swiss Fury three, yeah. Uh, Mana Morphos, spike you, bolt you, gut shot you, kill you. I'm like, well, yeah, I'm dead. I mean, like that's <laughs> essentially just the mono red Phoenix list, right? Yeah. Yeah, it was it was the Phoenix list. Yeah, like the Mono Red Phoenix actually uh, with um, lava, uh, the lava spike, mm -hmm. or n the one from Horizons where it's like ping for one, flash back by sacking a mountain, ping for one. Mm -hmm. It's very good with Soul Scar Mage, which the deck was already playing, and just one drop prowess creatures. Like it's like I I honestly wish I had surgicals and stuff like that because I'd actually like to play some Mono Red Phoenix in, in modern like. Is it risky for me to just thought seize him here? In case he's on the reveler? I think it's fine. Because okay. I just like. Because I'm going to have to fetch shock, though, as a thing to purge. It's fine. We're like clearing up his entire board. He won't have cards in hand. Yeah, get out of here. Get out of here with your sweetness. It's like, there's. Got only one card. I know that he wouldn't have. Cast. I mean, honestly, we actually might have been able to just deploy the Arcanus that turn because it blocks the Swift Spear there. Yeah. And then this turn we could be like attacking and casting Fatal Push. Right, but instead we're gonna go get the Sacred Foundry. Sounds about right. And this we're gonna purge. Eight, take some more. No, we're gonna go seven. Seven, go to six. Let me see. We can see that. But flipping six is see the bottom is nuts. That's why I cut those cards. It's a little reasonable. Aria is a problem. Yep. Aria is a big. <laughs> You're like, drop, like was, drop all my threats. Aria, fuck. Yeah, like, uh, man, there's a point where I was like looking at cards for that blue red Electro Storm. I'm like, mm -hmm. This is just an Aria Flame deck, isn't it? And I was like, yep. Yeah. I All like right. Aria Flame a lot, man. Yeah. Honestly, like, I do legitimately think that the deck that we'll be playing after this, um, if you cut the 2,000 new storms and just ran two Hazaret's Fury, that it's just a better deck. 
or Hazard's Undying Fury, whatever it is. Because that card is hilarious. Six mana. Mm -hmm. Exile the top five. You may cast them without paying their mana cost this turn as long as they cost five or less. Yeah. Or, well, no, you not this turn. You just cast them. Like, you cast them all at the same time. But, like, it allows you to cast things like Wheel of Fate and um, Ancestral Visions and Lotus Bloom for no mana. It's pretty cool. I can take one damage, crack my clearing. Crack clearing and like kill the pyromancer mm -hmm. and everything. Yeah. Seems reasonable. That way you can swing them with both guys, get this clock going. I don't think I can afford to swing with both guys. Oh, you can't? Because that one has summoning signals. I'm stupid. Mm -hmm. Goyf's actually like the cheapest he's ever been, right? I don't even know what he's at now. I stopped paying attention. <laughs> There's too, too money for me. Like, a, I think they're like 40 bucks. If they're 40 bucks, that's kind of insane. Uh, the future site one's 80, but... I mean, that's like the original, so that's probably yeah, yeah. more expensive. I'm sure one of the Modern Masters... I think Masters it was the Modern Masters 2. Yeah, that's yeah. 50 bucks for Modern Mod Masters 2017. Yeah. It's only 50. I think that's also the one that uh, unfortunately does have that awkward printing uh, of the paper, but I mean, for the uh, for all intents and purposes, it's the same No, card. I think 2017 dodged that. I think it was, was the it? Master Sets after 2017. Okay. But either way, you can get Goyster now for 50 bucks, which, when the fact that they used to be up at $200... He does bring up a good point that I just bought Snapcasters. Trade your Snapcasters for Goyster. <laughs> You know, Snapcaster is better than Tyrone Bear at Lexan Dirks. Three. Excuse me. I didn't get your full name in there. I bought a play set of Snapcasters. They've literally sat in my box ever since. That's because you play Tron. I mean, it's all... I think I just take the two. No, I... I well, what I, did you I, take with Skuller? It's a draw card. Oh. I think I, I can't just be dead of Bolton Spikes. That's fair. Um, no, I just have a problem buying cards. I mean, honestly, like, that's kind of like a thing in modern. Like, you either like Goyf or you like Snapcaster. Because you sure. don't... You also can like Tron. <laughs> <laughs> it's not real magic. It's, it's totally real magic. One, two, seven, Karn. <laughs> yeah, it's for, for people that failed math in high school. Oh, I totally didn't film. <laughs> oh, I think I'm gonna unearth Tide Hollow, take that thing, swing, Inquisition, take that other thing, drop a shadow. Seems like a good play. Thanks. Popping off. Pop, 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 pop. Agreed, Lucid Hope. Although I do have to say it's not as good of a feeling as unearthing a um Season Pyromancer. That, that card, when you, like, you just, last card on Earth, bam, draw two, put a two, two into play. Woo, so good. Inquisition, take that, or I can just Fatal Push kill it. Listen, then just, we don't, we don't invoke the devil here, okay? To mere promos, I have literally always lost with that deck. <laughs> <laughs> I, it's a, it's a consistent 3-1 on Mondays. Oh my gosh. Consistent. The last month it is gone. I, I will give that at a, better. at a local FNM, sure. On MTGO, I've got like 0 and 5. Didn't uh didn't Gorbatron uh at regionals, didn't he like make top sixteen with it? Yeah, he did. Yeah. And and, and, and a, in a how many PL players were there? Three hundred and sixty? And and Andrew also uh has done very well that generally top eights win an event if the format's right for he him. He actually has a following. The yeah. magic community. He's known that as guy. the rug guy. <laughs> it's hilarious. It's it's even better uh, that they know him as like being on our team. Because like, hey, is your team here? Yeah. Is that guy here? Yeah. Is he on it? <laughs> the the deck is just an absolute blast to play. Um and like I do hate Tarmogoyf in it, I'm not gonna lie. It's like Tarmogoyf is just kind of crappy. I think we're well, just going to make him discard and draw. 
discard and deal damage. Just kill him quicker? Mm-hmm. Sure. You and you. Heal you. Reveler. We're so good at this. Oh my lord. Uh, he has to be so mad he drew that would crash through. See, if we had a bolt, he'd be dead. Yeah, bolt's good. Oh, uh, I don't know exactly what you're uh, referring to, uh, call me Bean, but um, I think uh, Teamer Promos is the answer to your question. If you're talking about the silly deck. Although the deck we're currently playing is Mario Shadow, as yeah. we hope is provided. Yep. <laughs> We, we haven't been talking about the Mardu Shadow deck too much, <laughs> to that's be a, fair. That's a fine deck. It's fine. It's, I mean, it's we're interacting. yet another Shadow deck. It has interaction. Like, discard spells will still be good in the format. I think the Unearth Mechanic uh, design card here with the Ranger is awesome. You get to do mm -hmm. some insane grinding. Um, like, the chains you can do that's just stupid strong. Yep. Don't have double burn. Looting, okay. Yeah, like, there's a lot of really cool things that's going on with this deck right now. What if he just, like, looting drew two phoenixes and discarded them and killed you? The fact that we haven't seen a phoenix yet, though, makes me... Oh, so Team or Promo's actually just Rug Moon. <laughs> yeah, it's essentially Ooh. a Rug Moon deck. Um, it plays some silly cards, but um, it, it's referred to uh, within our friend group as Team or Promo's because the guy who built it and plays it from time to time and lends it out... Uh, he likes to get, like, it's foiled, uh, like, the expensive foils. Um, he likes to get the promo versions when he can. Um, just, it, it's a very beautiful looking deck as well. Like, that's that's half the fun of playing tier promos, is, like, just staring at the foil scalding tarns that are in your hand. You're like, oh, my lord. <laughs> I'll see if I can find a deck list uh, for you. But yeah, it's essentially, like, just plays good green creatures, Goyf, Tracker, Snapcasters for the good spells. It has a lot of, like, um, value loops with Snapcasters and Pulse of Marasa and things like that. That's the deck. That's the one he top aided the IQ and Frankenmuth with. Uh, it has Modern Staple Nimble Obstructionist in it. Mm. Um, and this was a m little bit more recent version from April. At an IQ, he must have top aided. Sounds it's like a little bit different now. So like, well, actually, oh man, it's a lot of it different now. Um, since the printing, it has the um, new snow theme yep. in it too. Since the because uh, Ice Fang Kotal is just very good in the deck. Holy smokes. Because, like, you naturally want to fetch basics in the deck because you're playing Blood Moons in the main. So, um, the snow lands are in there. Those are basics. Mm -hmm. You don't get turned off by Blood Moon. Ren and Six, huh? That he can't cast? Do I care? He has, like, two Tarmogoy, so it kind of feels stupid to take those. And we have two Fatal Pushes. I kind of want to just take this Ren and Six. Like, we can literally deal, like, we have three removal spells in hand. So we can deal with both boys and the ooze, okay. and we just don't have a good threat. Like, I guess we have Hex Parasite. Which could have dealt with. It could have. It could have. <laughs> it can also keep the ooze small. Uh, Hex Parasite, I am kind of okay with it being a one-of. It actually has been serviceable, because yeah. like you forced a Tron opponent to pop their o -stone one turn mm -hmm. by... Because uh, you can... You can target, I'm sure you've been here to hear this before, Lucid, but I'll repeat it for any new watchers. Um, you can target a permanent that does not have counters and still pay the two life. Yes. Um, you can do X is zero, pay the two life, target, and you just lose two life, which is really good with onboard shadows because it gives you just an ability to just go all the way down to one if you're at an odd life total. Um, I hate these wives. They're kind of ugly. But I kind of like them because people hate them. You know, that troll that has been inside me since birth. It's just like, yes. Yeah, you stop. Silent <laughs> <laughs> uh, Clearing and Hex Parasite.
Yeah. Fortunately, like Hex Parasite, no longer good here. We can always unearth him if we need him again. Yeah. Yeah, no, the, the troll value is is high. Uh, I mean, I'm not as insane as, like, uh, uh, like Caleb, Caleb Derwert whiteboarded some Guru Basics. I remember correctly. He whiteboarded some very expensive cards. I mean, when you got the money, man, you got the money. Oh, you like that art? Don't you play with the other older art? Is that the art that they did the extended one in Ultimate Masters? I think so. So, like, I, the reason I don't like this art is because it feels not magic-esque. Like, when I look at this art, it feels like something out of Yu-Gi-Oh! Or even more, like, on the point would be, on the nose would be, like, Duel Masters. Like, it looks like Duel Masters art to me. I had never played either of those games. Okay. Well, I, I, I kind of disagree with Yu-Gi-Oh! Because Yu-Gi-Oh! has a lot of, like, anime stylings to it. Okay. But, I mean, like, I can see where you're coming from yeah. with the Yu-Gi-Oh! thing a little it, bit. It just feels out of place to me. Oh, gross. Um, gross fetch set crack, match. and I have to... I can't do both. Not oh, so you're casting in yeah. position? I guess I'd just rather... Yeah, I'd rather just push instead of give him another land. Do I just make my dude bigger? Probably with him a thick, thick boy. He's big and he's beefy. Okay, thank God. Yeah, I think matching is really important. It really is. I, for the longest time, had one new Metamorphos and then three of the original Shadowmore ones, or whichever Shadowmore block ones. Um. Yeah, it didn't match when it was like kind of tilting. <laughs> I traded, I traded for an older one, uh, eventually. But man, I was just. I am intentional about not matching things when one's supposed to be in the sideboard. That is smart. I do like that. Sometimes I get confused. Um, I died of a bolt. Yeah. Who cares? Get him. <laughs> Drop the elbow on him. If it doesn't block, I'm going to crack this fetch just for the extra one point to put it on a two-turn clock. Yeah. Yeah, like um, my ghost quarters, I used to run two main and one side for uh, one of my decks. And I would put the uh, one of them as an old border just so it would be... I know that it's supposed to be in the side. Yeah. Uh, the brown rice, I haven't seen them because all you do is draw lands when I watch the matches. <laughs> Savage. <laughs> Aww. Hashtag doubt. Oh, what? Oh, gosh. This guy keeps ripping spells when they're relevant. This is one of those Jund opponents that just always gets you. They just always have it. I'm going to go down because I need to... It doesn't really matter what I'm doing it for here, but I just want to eight because I draw the uh, Battle Rage to kill him. Attack blood pure throw, right? Battle Rage. Battle Rage. Say it with us, chat. Battle Rage. Okay. We didn't give him a time for the delay. We needed chats. To I gotta on. get I gotta get one more league until and I'm usually done by this time. <laughs> <laughs> on the plus side, you're piloting that next one, so. Oh, I'm piloting it? It's your deck. I don't okay. even want to be part of that pile. <laughs> You don't, want, you don't want to have some interesting kind. You just kind of like just go to sleep while I end your stream for you. Get some snoozing in. I don't think he can sequence anything to win. Let's see here. Yep. Um. Yeah. Well, we did one of these already. What did we do? To be fair, this this is a different deck though. I think Fulminator is a big here, right? Call against yeah, Fulminator is really good against Jund. I feel like Gideon's fine. Yeah, right? Gideon and Purge. You want the Purge? 
Yeah, I have like Liliana's and stuff. Okay. Uh, do we just go with the? Mm. Mm, that's true. We said they did not have fog. Yeah, if they had fog, they would have won. I mean, I don't know if they would have won. But... Um, a tight howl is just too weak here. I don't like them against like uh, removal decks like theirs. Okay. Uh, keep take out the inks. Keep the thoughts so we can paint ourselves. Yep. All right. Oh, wait, should we take out one more so I can get Lily in here for the grindy? Oh, yep. Grindy, grindy. Easy. So I have like two weeks left on my class. And like, I'm excited that this next week is actually easier. Um, so normally my week is like one article review, which is like 500 to like 750 word paper. And then two discussion boards, which are 500 to 750 word papers, plus a, like a 250 word response, right? Um, and then uh, problems, and it's usually six to eight problems. And the six to eight problems, honestly, have been taking me the longest. They, they're they're kind of intense. Oh, okay. Because um, I hate online classes because I have mm -hmm. to teach myself. And this is even worse of an online class. It's a self-study, which is literally you are teaching yourself. They provide like, – I have access to all of the – I don't like the Tide Hollows. No, I'm um, – I'm not a fan of them. I feel like they aren't doing everything that they could be doing um, for your deck. And I feel like they fill, fill in an awkward spot where we could be playing a different threat. Because a lot of times we're stuck with the Tide Howls in hand or they're on the board and they can't do much. So Yeah, it's like they've either been like a lightning rod for one of the two removal spells in their hand. Mm -hmm. And I mean, like, sometimes it's fine, but I'm just not a big fan of the card in general. Right. It's also awkward because it's an artifact and just literally everyone has artifact hate. <laughs> Getting splash hated by that stuff is just miserable. Show us a bond. Snapping ground. Yeah, so like I believe this next week I don't have to do an article review. I think this was my last one. Um, but I'm like super annoyed that my last week I have a final exam. And usually when you have a final exam, you have nothing else you have to do. Yeah. I have problems to do during that last week. Oh and I'm like God. so bothered by that. I'm like, I would be bothered. I'd be tilted out of my gourd. Yeah. So I'm like, why do you have me doing additional homework to learn material before my final exam? Yeah. So I was like, this, this is dumb. So, I was annoyed by that, but uh, nothing much I can do. I'm going to try to knock on all the homework this week. But the homework, uh, I, I don't believe I have to do an article review, and I just have to do a, um, I just have to do a, the discussion board and the problems, which will be useful for my time anyway. Yeah, I'm, uh, this is, after this class, I'll have three more classes. I have uh, two fall classes, and then I have my capstone in winter. Uh, slash, you know, it's January or so that runs a seven week course, and then I'll have a master's. And I don't think I'll be going back for any serious schooling uh, anytime soon. Um, but I might go back for some fun schooling if there is fun schooling. Have I told you this plan? So, CC, our CC is very well known for what? Cooking. Great. They also added on what recently because we we're Brew City USA. Are they really adding a brewing course there? They have it. It's there. <laughs> Great, right? So yeah. you can become a brewmaster there, because that's I was told that's the title. Oh. <laughs> Good Lord, and make everybody call me brewmaster. Well, how good of a shtick would that be, right? I'm doing like a like a teaching campaign or like a seminar or whatever. Uh, and up next, it's Brewmaster Vu here to teach you marketing. <laughs> Oh my lord. I think I just need to draw a card here because I really need to hit on another land. That'd also be great for the SEG uh, spotlight. Right? A literal brewmaster. Who do we have up next? It's Brewmaster Vu. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so I like thought about just. Go oh, now we draw the Battle Rage. Hmm. Now what I'm pitching. Oh, there's the land. Uh, Lil Lily. Um, I think, right? 
and playing it right into their blood break turn seems kind of awkward. But then creatures. Seem... The alternative is playing Dreadhorde and, pa and holding a path, which just seems fine as well. Well, if you uptick the Lily, you can't. You can't die to it. Yeah, to the blood braid. So I guess I guess playing Lily here is fine. And like if they don't have blood braid, it, it's and be we can like try to just pressure them out with the Lily ult. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, I, I think what I might do is, because uh, I have a bunch of my general education stuff already squared away, so I would literally just be taking cooking classes mm -hmm. and brewing classes, which seems fun. Like, I, I don't mind doing that at night. Seems like a lot of chemistry for mm -hmm. the stuff. Just so it you, is. Like, brewing is, the, yeah, brewing like, is just chemistry. Yep. Understanding the uh, fermentation process of different things and how they chemically interact with each other to create different flavors and all that kind of stuff. It was really sad. I know a lot of that from like this like weird anime, or it wasn't an anime; it was a manga. I think it had an anime adapt adaptation, but they got like super super in depth with um the like scientific process behind a lot of because it was like based a lot on like fermented foods and things like that. Mm -hmm. Um, and so they got like, really in depth with the like scientific process behind it and all that kind of thing. It was actually like very educational. I'm running out Dread Horde because if he Lily down ticks, I'd rather it be on Dread Horde, I guess. Sure. I don't think there's anything I want to bring back, but anyways. Unless I want to bring back a Street Wraith and draw a card. And I, I kind of like just pressuring them with your uptick. Yeah. So yeah, I'm like really looking forward to being done with school. I'll probably take like a year off or so and just work on my debt and see if I can zero that out. Um, while focusing on the new business, mm -hmm. and then uh, after that settles all in, no. the new business. Yeah, yeah, I'm starting up a new company with oh. a, a friend and a friend of a friend. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cool. We are starting. We just. Uh, I was supposed to be doing it tonight. Probably should. I'll probably still do it tonight. I gotta create an inventory. We're getting into the uh, men's accessory. Uh, we're creating a new mm. uh, online clothing store, and we'll be focusing on ties at first. But long term, I'd love to do like ties, belts, socks, uh, pocket squares, cufflinks, tie bars, like pretty much anything and everything uh, men's accessory related, because I can house that kind of inventory uh, pretty reasonably, and <clears throat> uh, and then I think that'll be pretty cool. Yeah, no, that would actually be really sweet. Yeah. So. Um, it can the bring, rising of hex parasite to bring Lily to one, but then we lose our shadow. So I think we just run out of shadow, bring it down to bring it down to one. Yep. And that way, if he sacks, we just sack our hex parasite. Mm -hmm. Hex parasite. Hex parasite. Oops. This seems like an annoying ability. <laughs> God bless for mana. Yeah. So yeah, I'm, uh, I'm excited for it. Uh, we're putting in an inventory here. We're hoping to be... Okay, I need to remove it. Uh, we're hoping to be launched in this fall. Uh, Mid-fall. Cool. So, um, new endeavor. It's pretty Try. exciting. Yeah. It's just sort of like more of a side hustle thing? Or are you, just lo or are you looking to like maybe like get in... It like if it takes off, like, really get into it? Or... It would have to make a good amount of money for me to be willing to leave my job and not do it as a side thing. Like, if it's making that much money, there's a good chance I would rather... Um... Oh, this is really unfortunate. Yeah, that sucks. This is going to die. I mean, he, he has, has to use up the Lily. We're, we're both at parody here. But he's much better at breaking parody. Because uh, we don't like... have the white for a ranger. That is fair, but like an unearth off the top is pretty gross. Like we have shadows that are big. Yeah. It's like um No, like if if it's making really good money, I'd rather if one of the I don't think either of the other partners would want to leave their job either. So I think we would just hire someone to manage it and then do warehouse work. So I mean, I've got experience in a warehouse, so you yeah. know, if you if you ever if you ever get to that point, you know, I've got that that business degree too. You know, just just you know, hashtag making some statements. <laughs> it's a ravine, safe to swing. He can make that a three, four, five. Yeah. 
That ooze was kind of an annoying top deck. Very. Because now our unearths are offline. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, no, well, I'm, I'm, to be fair, they're not completely offline. You can still cycle them. That's right. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll see where it goes. I, I kind of want to start doing a bunch of other side stuff, though, now that I'm going to be done with schooling. I'm just getting set up for that. Mm -hmm. So. Do you think you'll ever put, like, more time into your stream or anything like that? Um, yeah, I would like to, like, in the long term, once I'm done with school, so that's, like, six, seven months from now, right? Mm -hmm. Um, I would like to be in a position where I can... Um, stream two nights a week, travel for Magic once a week if I'm doing a big event twice a week, you know, it'll take up two days, and that eats up one of the stream days, which is fine with me. Um, and then I'd probably, like, dedicate one night to one business, another night to a different business, and then the other two nights would be, like, or three nights would be, like, just my personal life, because that's a big mm -hmm. thing for me, too. I don't want to... Oh, sure. yeah, no, you don't want to overload yourself. Like, mm -hmm. there's, a, there's a lot of, like, content creators and other people like that that have just, like, they just bite off way more than they can chew, and they mm -hmm. get bogged down, and, like, you know, they eventually realize it, and most people are understanding when they change their stream schedules and things like that, but, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a big... Uh, you need time for yourself so you don't yes. lose your friggin' mind. Yeah, and then, like, realistically, I imagine within a few years, I'll, like, settle down. So, like, I want to make sure that I'm oh, that was an idea. Um, setting aside time. Well, yeah, we drew one with the <laughs> one we had. So, um, I think I don't really want to crack that as a thing because it's our bite source, and I really wouldn't mind getting our ranger and get another it's fair. one. So I think we're just going to pass. Um, yeah, like, I, I imagine I'll have to set aside time for that and want to be prepared for it. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to be unreasonable. Like, I, I've already thought about the contingencies and what I'll do if I, you know, like, settle down, is that the opens in Magic Fest become, instead of, like, I, I just, like, leave on a Friday night, drive there, do the event for two days and come back, it would become, like, a... Uh, four or five day weekend, right? Like mm -hmm. I go to very particular open. Yeah, you choose it out and you make it a vacation and so mm -hmm. just like a grinder event. Yeah, I, and I could do like Friday, spend time with significant other and or family, if depending what goes on. Mm -hmm. And then Saturday, uh, I pay for them to go do whatever they want or they go do whatever they want. And then Sunday, if I make the second day, if I need to do the you know second event, sure, that's great. If not, now it's another day with a family and then Sunday probably drive back. Yep. So I think that's like a pretty good way to go about it. And I think I see a lot of the pros doing stuff like that too. Like, oh, oh yeah. Are we dead if we don't block? Um, we go to four. I don't think. We, I think he ate all the. I don't know. We have a street wraith. One. Two, three. So we go to one. So we would no longer be able to use the silent clearing for mana. But can we win if we block with shadow here? We should cycle this on Earth first before making any decisions, because we can draw a Fatal Push, right? Yes. Because, like, the ooze on the board is just blanking the on Earth. Oh, it's only two? Yeah. It's even better. Uh, I want to keep that one, right? That way I don't have to hurt myself? Yep. <laughs> well, the, the thing is... I don't even hate this block, because then we can paint ourselves. It becomes a 7-7. Seven, seven. Potentially get there. And if we hit the removal, then we're just gravy. Yeah. Like, I don't think we're winning if we don't cycle that. I don't know. But we can still paint ourselves and get the tray here. And then no, he's side. got three block. He makes that an 8-8. Eight, eight. Oh, no, no, we can make ours a 9-9. No, a 7-7. So then, no, it's not well. Because he's got Street Wraith. Like, even before the Street Wraith, he had Street Wraith, Ranger, and the Hex Parasite. Yeah. Yeah. So, I think this is just game. We'll block. Because we have to block. Those yeah. are dead. Um, I think we have to correct clearing. Mm -hmm. Let's see if we get a removal spell. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, you get our stuff. You can... Oh, does he have a random six in hand? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, it's yeah, a good we... thing we blocked. Because <laughs> we bobbled and saw it. I should have recognized it. If he does use that green... Oh, he's going to do this? I'm willing to pay life to make him do it. Um... 
It's so he can't play the Ren and Six for a turn. It's like, is that worth it? I don't know. I, I honestly think like drawing the, draw. the card the draw here and more. having the mana open is way better. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I can see that. Yeah, I also want to like start snagging up some retail pro uh, rental properties. I feel yeah. like I'm supposed to do that because I'm in this industry. That's fair. So see how that plays out. The problem is I'm waiting for the market to crash. <laughs> I I don't know if it, it's gonna do that here in the GR area for a while. Uh, it will. It's already it's already on the onset. Oh, is it? Yeah, sales have slowed down. They just decrease the um. So when whenever they decrease the rate, we're so dead. We're gonna get there. Street rate. I don't even know what we could get. Donkey Kong. Yeah, we're done. That's unfair. That card doesn't kill green creatures. <laughs> no, it doesn't. Etron? Uh, I'm probably not playing Etron tonight. What do you think they ban on the 26th? Um, if what I'm heck super <laughs> hopeful, I would love to see them. So it, it, they have to kind of like. Uh, like I've said this before, if, uh, if you haven't heard this rant. I think. Uh, Wizards has to make a stance right now of where they want this format to be. If they want it to stay the turn three format that it is, then they probably don't have to do too much other than ban Hogak. Um, if they want this format to be better than what it is, then there have to be some more drastic differences that's going to have to occur. Um, like, if the if they stay this format the way it's at, there's no reason to keep Stoneforge unbanned. Like, that's an easy unban, right? On a more like outside of the crazy scale would be like split a twin and birthing pod probably is still just not good enough at this point if they if they let like stuff like Hogak stick around. Yeah, if Hogak sticks around, like you can just unban the entire list and just not care. Yeah, it, it it's that bad. Uh, just right bring now. back Eldrazi winner. Come on, let's let's see who's better. Hogak or Eldrazi's <laughs> But if it's a reasonable ban um, they could probably just go with the Hogak ban. It, it impacts that deck. Now, probably a shell of the Vine deck would stick around. I do think they were correct to ban Bridge um, first, just to see if it... You're not going to see anything from Eldrazi get banned. Like, it, it's performing well because it's preying on a deck. It's not doing anything degenerate that's going to cause a ban at all. You, you're, you're absolutely safe with Eldrazi They haven't right now. Banned, banned Tron lands yet, and they're just never going to do it. I don't think they will. Unfortunately, at this point, um, if you were waiting for that, <laughs> yeah. I always have my hopes because I'm a, I'm an optimist at heart, but <laughs> which is why I get so heated about these stupid things because I'm so optimistic and it just never happens and then I get disappointed again and again. Right. If they do, an, uh, some people have been talking about if they go for a faithless looting ban without banning Hogak, thinking it's going to weaken the deck. Um, I think that's incorrect. So, so I think. What do we have here? Oh, the. Oh, just the versus a... matchup. Cool. I'll have to check that out. Is there something relevant in there? Old one. SP. What do you mean by Jurassic? Did we say Jurassic? Um, I'm not entirely sure. Oh, oh, okay. So back to my train of thought was if they want to not impact the rest of the format, um, it'll be if they could just ban Hogak. Um, and if they choose to go with the faithless looting ban that some people have been talking about, I think that'll be really interesting if they just ban that and they don't ban like the rest, like. If you ban looting, it's not going to be enough to stop Hogak at all. So it's yeah. Lucid has a good point. Probably should be bobbling first and then doing the disruption because then you know what cards on top, so it gives you better information. Very, very fair. Card. Oh. Oh, are you talking about oh, Eldrazi Winter when I mentioned that? Um, yeah, Eldrazi Winter is kind of crazy. 
Yeah, it was like similar to this format. It was essentially um, it was before they banned Iavugan, which reduced the cost of Eldrazi's by two colorless. Well, excuse me, not colorless. Generic. Uh, too generic. And it allowed you to have very busted curves. Like, uh, turn one. Oh, oh Eldrazi no. Winter Pete's whole guy. I could see that, because they, they, like, overwhelmed the board, and Thought Knots coming down that fast in multiples could definitely, yeah, like, like turn clean one up. Mimic or two, and then mm -hmm. turn two Thought Knot, turn three Smasher. GG. <laughs> Although, I mean, like, gosh, if they get an early Hogak, though, like, Eldrazi Winter doesn't have a good way of getting rid of an 8-8. That, that, that video would be very interesting to watch, I actually, now, now that I know what that, the, I thought that was, like, one of the videos they did of, like, Etron versus Hogak that they've mm -hmm. done on Versus Live, but if it's uh, Eldrazi Winter uh, I, versus that, that would be a very interesting watch, because, like, I, I'm a big fan of the, like, uh, the band series that some places, mm -hmm. uh, some content creators have done. Oh, all is, yup. Never mind. All right, yeah, that's pretty stupid. All is dust. Are you going to turn three? Um, Simeon? If you go Eye of Ugin, Temple, Temple, that's only six mana. Well, they do play some Ian Spear Guide in some of the lists. So if it's the like straight color list, then they have Guide. So yeah. I mean, even on turn four, though. Like, all of this seems just like a big trump card in that mm -hmm. matchup. Like, Plague Wind You for, like, tapping through two lanes. Yeah. <laughs> Tap two lanes, Plague Wind You. That does seem pretty busted. God bless Eldrazi Winter. Well, like, the thing is, like, All Is Us isn't even, like, back backbreaking, right? Like, it, it is, but it's, like... It clears it, up the board that... So, like, essentially, like, Hogek can swing, like, the 8-8 in, mm -hmm. but the if you have a Smasher on the board, they can't swing Bridge Vines, or the, the Vinge Vines, or, like, any of the other stuff. Right. And, um... So you kind of, like, stare at each other a little bit, and maybe take, like, a hit from Hogek or something like that. Right. But then, like, you just get a turn where you're, like... You eventually drop... Yeah, you have, like, a Mimics, and you're just, like, yeah... Bam. Yeah, or Jared, you're playing like Endbringers. I don't know if those play, they played the Endbringers in those lists. No, it's just. No, like, I think they played it in the sideboard of like Blue White, because that was the slow version. Mm -hmm. Colorless was the like hyper aggro. Blue White was the more interactive, slower version. I think they played Drowner in Blue White instead of Endbringer. Mm -hmm. um, and then there was. Um, I find it super interesting that the degeneracy of Eldrazi Winter reminds me of the degeneracy of Mono Black and Standard, where yep. the decks were all very like, inbred. Yeah, inbred versions of itself that are beating other versions of itself. Mm -hmm. Which is like somewhat interesting to like look at for brief moments in time, but like, like I would honestly love to play of like a month of a. I don't think he was like saying that. blue white control. He's saying blue white Eldrazi. Yeah, there, there's a blue white Eldrazi list, the one that played um, the Sky Spawner and the Displacer. There, uh, so in standard during um, what was it RTR Theros? Yeah, R so RTR Theros uh, standard um, mono black devotion was a deck, and it was just miles ahead of what everyone else in the format was really doing. Um, like, you got to play control, mid-range, and, like, all that stuff. I'm not sacking the clearing because I want to be able to path in case I need it because I'm at five. If I block one, I need to be able to path the other so I don't die to bolt. Because I believe he has a bolt in hand because he hit the other bolt, blood braid off of bolt. So we, ha we can't take anything here. Yes, they had Tossies too. Yep. Yeah, that was a that was an interesting standard. I mean, like I still played random garbage, but uh, it was um I don't know. I mean, like does that thing have Death Touch? The engine. Oh my gosh, I'm so bad. In for the two for one, baby. So bad at this game. Does Hogak really beat up humans that much? I feel like humans could, with like some of their stronger starts, could actually like 
kind of deal with it. Because, I mean, like, Reflector Mage does seem like a good way to keep Hogak off the board for a bit, right? Like, you bounce and they can't recast that spell. Yes, Although, I guess it, it I, is, but they like, can so... get around that with Carrion Feeder by sacking it to fizzle the ability. Yeah, I mean... I don't know. It's, uh... It's not great. Because they're too... They're slower. So, like, what's... I mean, everything's slower than all It is. It is. <laughs> oh, they just had double bolt anyway. It didn't matter. Woo! Oh, yeah. I could have sacked the, the Ranger in response to the Cascade. But, like, the only thing that was worse was, like... I didn't want to do it in case he... Like, there is still the possibility he doesn't hit it, so then I just sacked it for no reason. Does Ranger stop I guess, all non-creatures or just instants and sorceries? In, I think it's non-creatures. I guess I should have just sacked it in response to once I realized I was thinking... No, because I, I don't have the op opp opportunity to. You have Yeah, you have to sacrifice in response to the Cascade trigger, because yeah. by the time that they do the Cascade, they get to put it on the stack. Right. All right, guys, I'm going to take the recording off.